round three. Fight! Well, welcome back, everybody. Lunch has been provided. Energy has been restored. And look at Martin. He can't wait to just jump back into it. So why hold him back? Let's go right into it. Uh, this morning, we there was two uh, teams in chat. Team Mirror got their wish through. The base is now on the other side. And the front of the machine is now uh, 180 degrees or 90 degrees reversed. This was the front before. This is now the front. The position of me has changed. So I have an ergonomically, ergonomically perfect playing position of the base. And we've been moving the instruments around. And that's the objective for today. We're still going to talk about instrument positions. And I think I will create the first real CAD file. So this, what you're seeing, that we started from scratch yesterday, is just a sketch. And we've also found out that we might be able to have a full-size vibraphone on the Marble Machine 3. Ooh. Woo! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm excited and a little scared because we made... The second gang was the team-wide gang. We made the machine wider. We, like, uh, spent no resources here. This is 140 centimeter wide programming drum. Yeah. All in the vein of now just add stuff that we want. Don't be constrained by the size of it. Let's play around with it. Exactly. We don't have to put limitations before we have to on our imagination. And I've been thinking about like next steps now. And I think I can sit here and move around stuff forever. But I think what I want to do, if we look at the stream objectives, um, I think I want to go down to point three here uh, and point two, channel center distance and plot the gear train. So. I think I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new CAD file. And this, my friends, is the first CAD file that is that I'm going to be serious with. So this is going to be a file that probably will live for us for some longer time. So I think we're going to take some inspiration from the Marmachin X project and call it the skeleton. Um, which is going to be a sketch file only. I'm going to name it XX, XX um, to kind of, is it 1L? You should know that from Skeletor. <laughs> it's 1L, I think. <laughs> Swedish is... Sweet. I should know that from Skeletor. Yeah, you're a, comic, you're a comic nerd, right? Yeah, it's 1L. Yeah. So I'm going to start here with... I don't even need components for this then. Uh, delete this. So basically what I'm going to do is that I am going to do um, sketches only from all the perspectives. And let's start with the middle plane. And I'm normally, I'm used to seeing the machine from here. But I should actually be... Yeah, I, I'm still going to cut it from from this angle, I think. Even though this is going to be the front. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to mark the programming wheel circumference here. So this is the first serious thing ever. And our max cutting surface Cutting size, if I show you real quickly our uh, CNC machine, Woo. that is <laughs> from Alex CNC, the custom designed Avid CNC CNC machine to cut rotary stuff. Our maximum diameter is 1100. Oh, chat. Yeah. If you want to help with something, I've been looking, this, this sounds stupid. <laughs> this might be, might, might even be stupid. If you want to look up um, sewage plastic water pipes, like the things that people bury down into the ground, they're like 20, 20 centimeter wall thickness. If you can find like standard diameter, I've already did some research because I think this is a very interesting material to use as stock material. Um, 
And what would be nice to find is like this plastic, you know, you know, the classic black part with like blue lines. It's like some kind of, so I'm, I'm interested in like one meter diameter or 105 or one meter, 10 centimeters, uh, outer diameter. I'm interested in wall thickness. I'm interested in like, if we can find out like some kind of standard for, for these kind of things. So, and maybe Hannes 3000, if you can pull a picture up as well, um, or if someone can send a link. What was it called, please? I don't know what it's called. It's like um, <laughs> when you see uh, like city diggers digging down like um, city sewage lines, they put down these um, huge plastic uh, pipes. Um, so some research around that would be would be very interesting. Because um, in the way, in the manufacturing method and the programming pin method that we have thought, we can actually cut that pipe to become a perfect, perfectly cylindrical and to run perfectly true. So we're not going to like base, um, it doesn't have to be perfectly round, we cut it down to perfect roundness uh, on this rotary CNC machine. So I think probably one meter or one ten meter. Let's start with one meter. And then I'm going to add the loop machine. So the loop machine is down here. Let's put the loop machine on 80 centimeter for now. Um, and we need to add some constraints. So if I put the top of the top programming or the top of the machine here. And then we don't want it to be more than like 230. The, the old machine was like 230 and we checked with the um, shipping container. We're going to try to stay within like 230. Um, so I can show you, we added a shipping container to here. One of the standard sizes is, I think it's a pretty small shipping container. I was surprised. You can see the machine is a little bit high for even a shipping container here. But we'll have all the time in the world to, to, to work on that later. So the loop machine doesn't have to be straight under the programming wheel. But we could also put it there to start with. I'm just going to connect these two. Say that you are perpendicular. And now this circle is still blue because there's one thing missing. It's the distance between the circles. So let's add that distance. And there you can see our sketch is almost completely constrained. We need to just fix this distance, so from the center of the programming wheel to the top. Let's do 700. Junk. Okay, Martin, a quick look over here. Is this uh, kind of what you... Yeah, yeah. That's the ones down to the left here. Common problem. PE, PE water pipes. Yeah. Okay. Joey Triviani, the <laughs> one with the blue line, is a PE pipe. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to add to the... So uh, I'm going to add here. PE water pipe as stock. Oh, sorry for the zoom. Stock material for um, prog wheel and loop machine. Um, polyutherane pipes. Is that the whole word for it? That sounds great. Polyutherane. I can't spell that. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Um, what I'm very interested in, in standard dimensions. And what we want is wall thickness and OD slash ID. And also like would be interesting, like, um, price. These are of course, industrial things, but it would be like fun to find. Um, so standard dimensions would be, would be amazing. This sounds, this feels like this kind of stock product that they almost can have like in building stores, like for people who wants to build something at home. But we of course need kind of the larger versions. 
So, and if you didn't see that yesterday, I introduced um, the new programming pin idea. If we go with a programming drum, uh, where did it go? Programming pin. We get we get a bunch of warnings that these uh, tubes are not perfectly round, though. Exactly. So that's what I already said that we put them on our CNC machine, and we um, we cut them down to perfectly round. Okay. Uh, so um, everything is gonna be cut to get a perfect center, uh, and so which means that if the wall thickness, the wall thickness has to be big enough. If they're really off, maybe we can force them a little bit round on on, on a hard frame, um, and then then we cut them perfectly round on this rotary CNC machine. Um, suggestions for other stock material is welcome. Um, it feels a little bit hacky, uh, but it's also no one else are making these kind of programming wheels, so there's no standards on how to make this. So. <laughs> I still have to go a little bit uh, shooting from the hip on some stuff to use like water pipes. But if the wall thickness is like one centimeter, we have a problem. If it's two centimeters, I think it's possible, but they should be pretty round though. I mean, the extrusion machine extruding them is going to be round. So it's probably like from from storing them and stuff that they maybe like fall fall together. So this is the machine seen from the side. And let's add all our shafts and stuff. So we need a crankshaft, which is over here. Um, I worked with 20 millimeter shafting. It's like super overkill, but this machine is huge. So maybe, maybe that's still good. And we're gonna ref refer all the positions to this point. Just put it somewhere. And let's just put it somewhere. Um, what else do we need? We need a gear train. Um, choo choo. We need a um, pulley from this point um, to drive the flywheel. 140. Ayako, septic tanks are injection molded and not extruded, I believe. Septic tanks. Wow, that's a big mold. Septic tanks have a bottom. These are like pipes with, they are open at both ends. I guess they are extruded, but I have no clue actually. So flywheel, I think the flywheel should share the axis of the... Um, Oh yeah, I forgot to show you. This is the programming pin idea. Uh, where are you? Where did you go? Here. So this is a precision pin. Um, and on it is an O-ring. So the holes cut by the rotary CNC machine are perfectly everywhere around. Not the problem I had on MMX when I tried to get all the four parts. The Dragon Slayer video all that jazz, <laughs> mm -hmm. no more dragon slaying. We just don't create a dragon in the first place. And these pins um, are just precision pin with a groove and an O-ring, and they're just held in by friction, uh, which means no magnets. So um, pretty epic and pretty precise. <clears throat> Patrick Persson, 630 millimeter diameter at 70 millimeter thickness is the largest PE pipes. So we know that for now. Yeah, I don't think it's, a, I found one meter, but give me those measurements again. Uh, 630, 630 millimeters. 
Wait, I'm gonna add a new tab here. Um, rename uh, supplier or something, doesn't mind. PEI, uh, the largest it, that was found in that list, probably. I don't, I, yeah, six, I don't know. 630 millimeter diameter. How much was the wall? At 70 millimeter thickness. What? That's the thickest wall I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> it's thicker than the Game of Thrones wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the <laughs> laughter, Hannes. 3000. Laughing out of kindness upgrade on 3000. Three, on one arm T Rex use GRP pipes like epoxy resin pipes come in large sizes. GRP pipes. GRP. Can can I see an image of those? I will find it. Epoxy resin pipes. That sounds um, that sounds less rubbery and more. Um, that sounds harder. Yeah, it looks harder. Is it more shiny? Perhaps it sounds more shiny. So right now I'm putting the flywheel on the same pivot point as um, having the loop machine. Um, let's add a shaft, 20 millimeter here. If you look here, these are big ones, okay? Yeah, this is this is what we're looking for. These walls are thinner. What kind of FRP, GRP? Oh, could we glass reinforced polyester? Yeah, that sounds very hard. I, I want to learn all these abbreviations. So GRP is glass reinforced polyester. I had this idea that they are brittle, uh, and we don't want that. That's that's why I think the PE is super good machining material. It's just uh, I I just think that I'm I'm not sure polyurethane, polyurethane, something like that, or a word like that. <laughs> <laughs> so but keep on suggesting pipe types as well I just mean that when you're doing a machining operation like this um, it's interesting to think what kind of stock you would start with and like a pipe is actually exactly what we would need so the correct type of standard pipe I don't want to do like custom solutions I want to like find something that is Easily, uh, readily available. Okay, back to the skeleton. So this is really fun because I think this is a file that we will live with for some time. FRP, GRP is brittle. Yeah. From Elliot. So GRP is... Oh, what is F... Stand for then? FRP. I saw something about that. Uh, FRP. Maybe I don't have to put the flywheel there. Fiberglass reinforced polymer. Oof. I'm j I just want to learn. Uh, so I'm going to put like this. FRP fiberglass reinforced polymer. <laughs> there we go. Everybody will learn something today. Yes. At the end, we're going to play the South Park. <laughs> we learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You know what I just thought of? You know what I've been dreaming about my whole life, Hannes 3000? No, what? Because I'm thinking about what pivot axis to have for the um, uh, flywheel. And to make this machine play tight music, I know I want like an oversized, monstrous flywheel. And I'm putting it here down by the loop machine. I just had a feeling that if I don't do that, Check this out. Check this out. Here we go. I can like see where I'm going with this. Like I want the flywheel to be 
frightening. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. at this, look at this. Yes, yes, yes. Now you don't just uh, be in danger with your hands, but a whole human can get <laughs> decapitated <laughs> in that flywheel. <laughs> for, for real, the larger we can make this fly... Like, imagine you go, you go on a world tour and this wheel starts spinning. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? So <laughs> <laughs> We can also have it, like, completely... Yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have, we're gonna. Yeah, oh my god, it's gonna be so dangerous. Um, probably put the glass things into it. Some people are suggesting a PVC is probably the best material to use. PVC piping. And so, why, um, why is that good? And what, what does it stand for? Let me check that for you. Something with polymer. So I think I'm gonna give the flywheel its own pivots for now. Maybe there will be some gears, gears on that. I don't know. Polyvinyl chloride. <laughs> what? Polyvinyl chloride. So in my mind, PVC pipes are Thin wall thickness, but that's maybe. Let's see what people have to say so we, about that. We need max diameter, or we need like the standard diameters in like around a meter, eighty centimeters. Fredrik Johansson is back here with polyurethane. Is technically a, a type of rubber that can be casted. We make smaller panels in that material. It can be steel reinforced and made with high precision. Yeah, because the the rubberness of it all, if it's like a hard kind of rubber, I think it's a good machining material. Plastified PVBC bends well. Regular hardware store PVC is also brittle while being fairly low resistance. Plastified PVC. Plastified B PVC. Plastified PVC. Look at my monstrous flywheel right here. <laughs> Everything is on one straight line. We don't have to have that later. PE is available in diameters 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600. Now we're talking. <laughs> now we're talking. Um, can, you... can you fix the screen, please? Oh, thank you, Anas. 3,000. Can you repeat? Uh, PE is available in diameters 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, and 1,600. And what is the wall thickness of those? It uh, doesn't say here. And can we have a link to those? So these are the ones we found so far. I think for the loop machine, like 80 would have been great. So can you see if 80 is available, like in the same? 80 in thickness? 800, I mean. 800. And what thickness are we going for? Uh, we want to know the standards. Different wall thickness available. Okay, what what different wall thickness is available? <laughs> I, I don't know yet. <laughs> I ain't no connoisseur in this topic you know me neither yeah. do we allow links in the chat that would be handy if we did sono tube is a kind of super dense cardboard that you can you could easily reinforce. It's used for round concrete columns and you can get it up to 60 inch diameter. Oh, I know what you, what you mean, but it's not a good machining material. And if it gets wet, the programming pins will not be exact anymore. So I'm 
this is the pulley for the flywheel, and this is the <laughs> mandracule here. There are HD PE pipes, which are the same as PE, but the material is reinforced. High density polyethylene. Polyethylene. HD. Oh, I seen that. HD PE. Yeah. High density. Since we want a machine, in, we don't want like these metal strains in it. High density polyethylene. Yeah. Polyethylene. I can't. There. Yeah, I think you nailed it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's same as the PE pipe over there, I guess. Yeah, but that's polyurethane, or maybe Th that's... That, that's your <laughs> spelling of it. Where was it also polyethylene? Yeah, let's see here. HDP. That sounds better. As long as the polyethylene. So yeah, it's the same on both of them. Yep. Okay. So uh, let's just. I th I think I've seen these with like these metal wires in them, and that's not good because we want to CNC machine them. Okay, so we have something more uh, uh, available for. Uh, I guess this was PE as well. Swedish supplier Pipe Life have max diameter 1600. Diameter 1000 is available in 24.5 to 59.3 millimeter wall thickness. Oh, that's great. And they also sell 1800 pipes, 19.6 to 58.8 millimeter thickness. 1800 that's too big or did he mean 800 yeah, yeah 800 didn't i say that 1800 Eight. oh no 800 millimeter perfect with uh 19.6 19.6 all the way up to 58.8 58.8 i wonder if that's like because this is very, very good. Do we have... Yeah, I, th I don't think we can go 110. Um, so what was the name of, of, of that site? Pipe... Uh, let's see, where was it? Uh, Pipe Life. Oh, that's a brilliant name. Pipe Life. Pipe Life. Pipe Dream. <laughs> Pipe, Dream. Pipe Dream to Pipe Life. <laughs> yes. So I would love to like have a document where everyone can just paste links. Um, uh, we we don't have that really set up quickly now. But what I mean is that these dimensions that are e readily easily findable are kind of perfect for this. So like a six centimeter thick wall gives a us a lot of space to machine down the surface to perfect um, circularity or something like that. So. Um, that's why I think this material is, is an interesting option. And I don't think it's going to be expensive either because cities buy like thousands and thousands of meters of this stuff. Yes. So I wanted to show you something with constraints here. Um, oh, please do. It's um, So this is the power transmission from the crank to the flywheel. And this is like, of course, everyone who CADs know about this. But up here, we have the tangential constraint. So I can tell this line to be tangential with a circle and look at the magic that will occur. Boom. 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 It's still orange, but when I do that, it's going to be black. So now we can have like a kind of, if we have a power transmission belt be between them, this belt will always follow here now. So if I change this size to 300, those lines are also following. And Actually, the size of this pulley should actually be a gear ratio. So we can already program our gear ratio into the CAD here by um, having this number over here, the 160 millimeters, be controlled by this number over here, the 300. So let's check this formula for this. It says D9, which means that I can always do this. Instead of writing a value here, I put D9 and then some kind of multiplication. So if I want the flywheel to go 
twice when the crank goes one time, I just take D1 divided by two. So that ended up now in 150, but that's now a function. Now I only have to change over here, say 260 millimeters, and this is Boom. always half. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Cadding <laughs> is fun, everyone! <laughs> The terrier is coming into the room. We should have a little studio dog hunt. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I got a comment here from James. He says that HDPE is very nice to machine because it cuts cleanly and does not melt onto the tool or leave fur. I mean, burr, I guess. Burr, right? Fur or burr. So HDPE, we have... Is it James Passmore? Or just James? No, uh, James. So HDPE... Um, machines nicely according to James. James. And I guess that HTPE will be harder than PE, but not as hard as GRP. So I'm curious for this, if we can find like these same dimensions for HTPE pipe. HDPE is also used for pressurized plumbing and irrigation. Strong and durable on its own. No, no steel reinforcement needed from Endofunk. Yeah, HDPE. So, still, Hannes, do you know if people can post links in the chat? Oof. How would I even know that? Or maybe I should just create um it's gonna be chaos maybe if i or maybe it's not gonna be chaos people will need to behave yeah people are so nice yeah here. we believe in our audience you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a little time yeah. um to just get this fixed i'm gonna share um let's share a new google doc here you know what i will prepare in the meantime uh, because our amazing colleague Asha has prepared some uh, files from Discord yesterday that we can have a look at. So I will prepare that. Let's see what we have. So, because I already feel that the help with um, sourcing things is going to be, it's going to happen a lot of times. So let's make a sheet. Let's start a new spreadsheet. Just call it public link pasting uh, marble machine three. Blue Sparkle should uh, ask if we shall enable links in the chat. Oh, we can do that directly. If you uh, Blue Sparkle can do it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, if people start... Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're trusting. We're trusting of people here. Um, so I'm going to share this new document uh, with the world. Anyone with a link. Uh, everyone is editors. You know what? We have... Uh, three images from yesterday that I will just uh, look on here from Discord that Asha prepared. This first one from Awesome Billy 3. Beautiful. He, he made you a little more lifelike. Beautiful. In your CAD model there. I look so happy as well. He looks so happy, right? And mainly why I wanted to show this now is because this beautiful image here of a very handsome gentleman. Oh, who is that? Hannes 3000. Beautiful. Got a nice portrait here from S M S H I M I N Shimin Shimin. Thank oh, Shimin made the Shimin. cat design of, of for a part of Marvel Shinex that never happened. So he, hi, Shimin, new person of many talents. Ooh, you see, now we had something actually an idea that they wanted you to look at. Yeah, that's exactly what... The, yeah, this is great. This is exactly what we're going to do. The the right one. Uh, spring... Side view... Yeah, this is this is the idea for the base. From but, totally add 171. Awesome, totally add. So 
Uh, I'm going to wait uh, one second. I'm going to no, not yet. Um, so if we go back to my my CAD, um, I have so many buttons here. Home. There we go. Hannes, I've shared a document with you. Um, okay, yes. On your email, if you can paste that link to chat. Everyone can fill in nice HTPE pipe suppliers into into that uh, public link pacing document. And I want to comment on on the image uh, shown with the the last image you showed um, from from Discord because the idea is to have the base standing like this, and I just want to show my uh, version here. So, if we're seeing the base from the side uh, here, so the marbles are hitting the hit point here. Right now, Hans, I can't really see if I'm doing this correctly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and this is the pivot point here. So this is the solution for how to, we came up with this yesterday in the stream, how to make marbles play bass strings through hammers, which there's a product called Hammer Jammer, which is super cool for guitar. So it's basically, I would turn it around like this. So the marble comes here and it comes here and it bounces here and it bounces like this. That was very unclear. Let's remove this. So you... You want me to share this link? Yeah, to the public link pasting document. Just put that one in chat. Okay. And people who have HDPE supplier websites with good, nice lists of available dimensions and characteristics, please uh, put the links. Um, HDPE suppliers. Thank you. So here's the idea, uh, that the marble comes from the top like this, bounces on this hit point, and the hit point can be broader than the strings, and this to the left is the string. So now chat can uh, see if the link worked. And now everyone, let's just remember to be nice. With 30 people in the HTPE suppliers, I see, I see like a Tetris screen on my right. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh, look at this. It's already happening. Work is being done before our very eyes. You guys are the best. And like, yeah, you guys are the best. Um, let's go here. Um... So what other thing do I need to put into here? We still don't have any gears. Um, so I need to make... Now the flywheel is rotating already, but the top programming wheel is not rotating. And I think we should use the same system as we did before. So a small gear here. Let's do 150 for now. And then a gear that is tangential to that gear. Uh, maybe we can put everything here. So should this gear share, share the flywheel maybe? Let's try that. No, this should be, oh, I have to start over here because this is going to be the same compound gear. So here's a small compound gear that is tangential with the programming wheel. Um, so I'm just going to give it a value, whatever. And then this pivot point is have to be tangential with here. Here. Looks a little messy right now. <laughs> and it doesn't 
Now I'm putting everything on one line. That's actually not so beautiful. Let's let's just put this a little bit more freely over here. Then the gear can be a little smaller like that. I'm seeing HDPE suppliers everywhere popping up. <laughs> so <laughs> lovely. And so lovely. And if someone has a better idea, uh, I'm all ears. Yeah, yeah. This is your possibility to show us your better solutions then. Yeah, we talked in this morning in the stream that I was listening to a podcast yesterday that was talking about the virtues of not thinking that you know the answer. And I think that's uh, like something that I will take to heart in this project. I, I don't know how this machine is going to look, but I know what process I want to use to find out how it's going to look. Yeah, and no. you have experience about things that doesn't work this time around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, I've, pain is a good teacher, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it feels wrong to talk about pain when there's war in the world. I just have to mention that. We mentioned it yesterday. Our hearts and thoughts goes out to everyone affected by the horrible situation. We have left a support link I made a small donation yesterday. It feels super, uh, you, like everyone else, you feel helpless. Yeah. And um, yeah, just biting my tongue sometimes nowadays when I'm like joking about pain where I actually can't relate to real pain. Yeah. Um, but of course, for snowflakes, the pain threshold is different <laughs> right that's, that's true that's true <laughs> um so the thing that is not rolling right now ooh, 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 ooh. can the loop machine be driven okay this is interesting if the loop machine was tangential to this gear um could the what will be the direction of the loop machine? So let's do that. We can get, I'm going to say to this little gear that's going to drive both the programming wheel gear and the loop machine, which would mean, can I make curved arrows? Uh, ar arrows? I don't think so. Oh, by the way, if I'm standing behind the base and cranking forward, the crank direction is actually different. So this direction is this way. Um. Um. If that goes that way, I would love to be able to make curved. I can make curved arrows. What I'm talking about? <coughs> Center point arc. Look at this now. Ooh. Offset. Hör du skål, Martin? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone joining us. Six. I'm making a very elaborate curved arrow. Arrow, it feels wrong, the word. Arrow? Arrow. <laughs> fin, va? So fin, Martin. Inte det den finaste pilen du någonsin sett? Du är sett. så <laughs> duktig. <laughs> Au. Ah. <laughs> um... This goes this way in the new... Oh, so maybe that's going to be an issue. Hmm. Okay, so it's good we're doing real basic basic stuff here. Which means that the big flywheel is going the same way. That's going to look cool. So I'm happy for that. Off. Minus 10. 
twenty. Boom. That's going that way. So already maybe I need to put in another gear because if we want yeah, let's just say let's just see right now how everything is going. So which means that this gear is going to go the other direction. This gear goes this way. 10 Cyber Wizard, can you tell Martin the fans are happy he's back at it? Never surrender. Tusen tack. I'm so happy to hear. Yes, thank you. It goes this way. And you know, everyone, what's so funny, like yesterday after a whole days of streaming, I was like completely like uh, manic about not about YouTube about the position of the bass guitar I was like it it it's was such a different feeling um yeah when we stopped streaming we had no videos to edit our work day was done so the only thoughts left was okay what about the bass now <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, so like this whole this the whole setup we're doing here is designed to give me at least a chance to succeed with this project, and I would also f I would also feel like if if I realize that I have to give up, that's also going to be a successful outcome. So I can move on. You know, we all can move on. Mm. That's gonna be like um, sad in a way, but also wonderful to move on. I love my curved arrows. And we touched this upon this yesterday, but just a quick reminder here. Mikey is wondering, will you be making it modular slash disassemblable? And that's uh, no. No. Nope. That's a design constraint that was uh, with, with, with the old machine. And um, so here's the old machine. And we made it in five modules to... Uh, fit in an air freight box of 160 uh, centimeters. It, can I show the CAD here? So, um, uh, so for example, the programming wheel is one module and having like to be able to take apart the mechanical connections just made it so much more complicated. So in, in our, um, what's happening now here? Oh, this is wrong. Firefox. Um, let me just shut this down. In our um, documentation files, we have omitted from MMX modular design to be disassemblable. It's a design constraint that we're not giving ourselves for, for this project and that, that will help a lot. Yeah. So like when you're adding like, when you're adding together hundreds of those constraints that was dumb, dumb design requirements, and you remove them, you open up a new design space. Yeah. Um, okay, so right now, this loop machine turns in the correct direction, which is great news. So it turns counterclockwise, but programming wheel is turning clockwise. So let me add the last arrow. Maybe I should put the arrow inside the wheels or on the, I should have put them on the line maybe. I'm gonna try to put the arrow on the line. Maybe that looks better. Then it's maybe more obvious which which wheel the arrows refers to. That looks cool, actually. So this is not the way the programming wheel turned in the old machine. 
So probably I need to put an intermittent gear here, which is annoying. Hmm. Uh, no, wait. Am I stupid? No, I put this one the wrong way. Ah, exactly. I was gonna remind you. The chat reminded me. One of the arrows were in the wrong direction. Yeah. The chat is skating where the puck is going. Oh, yes. <laughs> and you were as well, my friend. You caught it. I caught it uh, in time for... That goes this way. This goes that way. Loop machine goes clockwise like the programming wheel. Yeah, because this is old gear train, which means that the programming wheel is going correct. Um, yes. Boom. Thank you, chat. Yeah. Samyon Bibov. Skating where the puck is going. I love that phrase. <laughs> it's important, right? Yeah. It's it that that's what tells this audience apart. Boom. Oh, we got a save as well. Oh. Chat can relax. Nice. Only a hydration missing now from... <laughs> Why can't I... Oh, never mind. Why can't I move this? But I don't want this constraint here. Um, oh, you know what I should have done? No. No. Never mind. Not going to go over ambitious with the arrows right now. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. Okay. Wait. Now it looks like two arrows are wrong direction. Jan Walzer. This goes this way. This goes that way. This goes clockwise. This goes counterclockwise. Which means that... <sighs> What? No, because the crank is in the new direction. Which means that... So, it's not like the old machine. It's completely mirrored compared to the old machine. So, programming wheel goes this direction now, currently. There we go. There we go. Right? So you have to just go, you have to just switch it. So uh, clockwise drives counterclockwise, drives clockwise. Clockwise drives counterclockwise, drives clockwise. So now when they're driven by the same gear, this one in the middle here, both of the two loops will go clockwise. Uh, both of the two big drums. So... Like, the way to fix that would be to take away the tangentiality here. Like, I'm now I'm just improvising. Um, whereas I, before I, I wasn't or something. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been known to do that. <laughs> okay, so this is what I mean with my arrows. Maybe I should be a little bit ambitious with arrows. Because now they're all... We have to put a gear here. That is tangential to this one and this one. I don't like long gear trains, so. But I don't think we can get one to 64 gear reduction with only two pair of gears. Or can we? Wait, one to 64? No, that's impossible. 8 times 6... What's 8 times 64? 
eight times sixty four. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> See if I can find it before chat with a delay. Sixty four times eight. Five hundred and twelve, of course. Yeah. If, if yeah, it's like five hundred twelve megabytes uh, of ROM. Uh, that's why that number is that number. Um, so if I make one gear with 512 teeth, I could like omit these two, but I don't think this is going to be practical. So now everything would turn the correct direction. If we don't build a new way to trigger, trigger the things. Uh, yeah, Syrian cook. Would the crank not be turned the other way if he is standing on the left of the machine? Exactly. Yeah. And so that's that's now like um, it is it is turning the opposite way compared to the. Um, I'm standing behind the crank, so if you see here, uh, sorry, wrong file, here. So I'm standing behind the crank here pushing the crank forward, which means that the crank is going clockwise. And from this direction, it's also going clockwise from this direction with messes with, with, with my head a little bit, but it end, ends up meaning uh, the rotation has changed mm. the rotation direction. Rotation direction. Great band name. <laughs> um, So, but wait, why did I revert the flywheel? It's just going to go. Yeah, it's going that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's going that way. So the directions are good now. Only thing is the annoying thing to have like this extra gear. Um, which of course could provide. Yeah, I don't think I can solve it without that extra gear. So it's this little in between gear here that we didn't have on the last machine. Hmm. Cool. What do you think? Hannes 3000. What do you think my answer will be? <laughs> you love it. Yeah, yes. there we go. Yes. I'm curious about this. Yeah, I can change them. Oh, it just takes some time. So what I'm doing on this Cali sign, if you missed it in the beginning, this is one of the Cali signs that we're actually going to keep for a long time. I'm going to be a little serious with, with, with this design. Um, the arrows are just uh, for to help remember where things are going. Um, So this is the, I wonder if I should just clarify, maybe that's nice. I'm going to clarify what's what. Nice, this is good for me. Loop machine. It's actually good for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be good for the viewers as well. So crank. I'm gonna take make some nice lines as well, I think. 
Frank and so let's put flywheel flywheel and then we have um I'm going to call this gear two. Oh, we have a beautiful document with HTTPE. <laughs> it's filling up. It's it it all also graphically. It's becoming amazing. I'm seeing it over here. Um, where was I? Uh, gear two. Gear two. So I'm just going to put some Tivas lines. One färgkoda kugghjulen. <laughs> yes, I can't do that in a sketch. Okay. I will do that. Um, so it was a Swedish suggestion to color code. Um, and I will definitely do that uh, when we... Um, in here I won't make bodies. In here I won't, I'm going to keep it as a, as, as a sketch. A lot of people are asking about if you just connected the two big wheels, you can remove the smaller gears. But I, I'm guessing that the smaller gears have a purpose, right? So, um, very good thinking. Uh, but the lower wheel is going to spin four times faster uh, than the wheel on the top. Which means that uh, they, if, if we put a gear between them, they will go the same uh, speed. Mm. I mean, if we connect them, mm. they would go the same exact speed. I don't know why this turned orange. I'm just going to make sure everything turns black here. Let's see why. Uh, let's remove this first. So sometimes, sometimes when you have multiple centers, like these rounded arrows I made, they share like a center that breaks the, for example, this one, I can't, I can't drag it anywhere. So this one should be black. I've seen that in Fusion 360 a lot of times. And when you share the centers, sometimes you just have to redo it so here's a shared center so let's just reconnect this did you see that it turned black Oof. so it was Oof. it was actually already constrained but for some reason there's some kind of bug so these center uh, arcs i made share like the midpoint and fusion just breaks so i was like i have done everything that i should do but fusion broke it so it's kind of annoying. You have to like delete and do it again. And this uh, Sebastian Jimenez. So timing belt between the two wheels ratio one to four. Then they would spin in the same direction if you don't cross the timing belt. And oh wait, we want them to spin in the same no, no, we don't want them to say. Yes, so. Hmm. We need to cross the belt. I, I, I don't think it would be easier. It would reduce the number of gears, but it's the, hmm, hmm. I rather have like the helical gear transmission uh, for both the programming wheels. I think. Mm -hmm. Am I thinking correctly? Yeah, because if you put it in a figure eight, the rotation will be uh, separate. If you put it in a loop, like a zero, then they will be the same. But if you put the timing belt in a figure eight, 
you can reverse the rotation direction. You know what? I think we have our side sketch here. Oh, nice. I think I can leave it here. So then we're going to go again in this, the same document. And we're going to make the top sketch. Um, so this is in the middle of everything, as we can see here on the origin point. And now I'm just going to place the sketch like on this origin plane. So this is where it's getting serious with the um, um, center to center distance. So one of our stream objectives is the center to center distance. And I'm going to start to plot that here. Ooh. <laughs> Excitement mm. is filling the air. So, yes. I'm going to make a line for each programming channel of the machine. So, and then we're going to make a rectangular pattern, which I do not like to make in sketch, but in this, in this, I want to try it anyway. So let's have um, 30 tracks to begin with symmetrical and they are spaced by 30 millimeters. Mm. So our vibraphone plates are 40 millimeters. Let's say that they want 50, so 25 if we use black keys. So let's, let's take a hypothetical center to center distance on the programming tracks on the Mar Machine 3 with 25 millimeters. Um, let's do 60 channels. So let's head back to because we've been in the first stream we realized that maybe we can have full size vibraphone on this machine because we made the machine much wider and so let's start to count so the marble tracks are separate from the loop machine tracks so let's start to actually make a map over the marble tracks in so this is where we're going really to to the sheets here fix uh, the screen fix the screen so here uh, let's make this a little bit better so let's do this Let's do this. So let's just give us a couple of more, more marble channels. Yes, now we have a lot of vibraphone. We have so much vibraphone. So let's just see here. Just for fun then, uh, what would be the leftmost track? Base. Like we're starting with four or bases. Let let's do that. Let's think if that's possible. So let's let's one two channel one two four is four base releases. Mm. And we're not gonna drop two marbles on the same base string. That's another constraint that I'm crying inside for having to let go of. But I'm also happy that I'm doing it better this time. I'm going to remove that. Yeah, it it was tried, did not work. Scrap it for now. Um, let's see what we have then. And so now I'm going to puzzle. Um, let's, let's put a couple of vibraphone notes. So let's say vibraphone, and I think it's F4, the lowest octaves, vibraphone F4. Um, that's the octave name. And then we have uh, vibra F sharp 4, 
And then we have, I'm just improvising here. We're going to move this around G4. Then we have Vibra G sharp 4. Is this riveting or what? <laughs> this is what we all tuned in to watch. <laughs> this is beauty. And this is why we have the chat here, because they will see if you make an error here, my friend. Yeah, they will. <laughs> and this is highly, uh, we, in, like, in American, you never say, you, you say B, but in Europe we say H yeah. for this note. So it's like an age old grudge. Yeah. Among musicians. Let's just stay friends, okay? Let's all be friends. So here. Da -da -da -da. Let's have one marble track for the symbol. Uh, and then um Vibra C five because we're in a higher octave now. So Vibra C. Uh, uh, like Richard Upton Pickman said, this is quality content. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm doing work, so that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, no, I think I'm going to make this a little bit easier by. Um, by having like note name in a second column, I can move that around by itself. So it's easier to puzzle around later. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, four, sharp four, G four, G sharp four, A four, B flat four, and H four, and C five, B sharp five. How many vibraphone notes should we put here before the kick drum? Like. Oh, I don't know. We have to fix that later. Fix that in post. Yeah, exactly. D5. D5. D sharp 5. Then we have E5. And then we have a natural break here with F. So maybe we should have kick here. Yes. And I would love to have, so kick comes where there's not a black E, which makes sense. It's the same symbol comes here in the hole where there's not a black key. That makes sense. But I want two kick tracks. Um, so let's put it, hmm, how do we do that? Oh, maybe this could be an extra slot, like the suggestion we had before. Maybe we can hide the extra slots. Yeah, the extra vibra notes. Yeah, or maybe that's a bad idea. Because... Extra slot. We just, we just try this idea. Then this is a kick. And this here is F5. F sharp five, G five, G sharp five, A five, B flat five, H five, and here comes hi hat. No, no, sorry, 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 snare, snare, and then we do we we do the same thing. We do an extra slot around the snare, snare. Now we have two for the snare. And now we're on C. 
six. See, I'm just doing a theoretical uh, distribution here. D this D sharp six E six. And then before F comes hi hat. And then come F6. Is that all the vibraphone notes? Or are we going up to seven? Um, no, we then going to go up one octave more. What did we say in the beginning of the vibraphone plates? We said 36 plates. Are you asking me now? <laughs> no, no, I, I found it. I found it. I found it. We have one other octave to go. So this will result in me getting a number for how many programming channels we want in this case. Yeah. If we're going to be very, we're splurging right now. Yeah. This is like super splurge. This is the super size version of it all. Yes. F comes there. Then we have F sharp six. We're going to end up F seven then. G six. G sharp six. A six. B flat six. Age six. Did we already do the symbol? Yeah, we did. It's up there. Kick. Yeah, there we have a symbol. Snare. I had. Oh wait, I missed one. Um, People are uh, demanding more cowbell, so this would be the time when we're splurging to have a cowbell. Or if you want to go there, chat, we can just have cat and dog sound machine as well on there. I know you loved it. We did it last time. Age six. I have to admit I'm a little bit confused right now, but this is all good. We're on the way to something. D7, D sharp seven. E7, and this is the last note, F7. F, and if this holds true, we have 51 programming channels. So then we can feed that into, and then we actually have two extra slots. They are kind of ugly right now. So now we can feed that into our beautiful thing here. What did I say? 57? 50, did you say 51? Or am I that stupid? 51, thank you. Um, so 51. Let's just get a verdict on how broad this programming wheel is. Whoa! Not bad. Yeah. 1250 millimeters. Woo! Not too shabby, right? And the cool thing is, so, that is actually, well, maybe it's space-wise impossible. They would say 25, that gives only 5 millimeters. So let's make it a little bit wider. Let's make center, center 28. What do we have then? One meter forty cent. Oh, it's too big. It's too big. Let's make it twenty six. <laughs> what do you say? Good. Very good. Very good. One meter and thirty centimeter um, from center center of the outmost tracks. 1250 millimeters, that's a standard. 
I oh. guess the standard vibraphone is around that. Yeah, that should be including the frame. Yeah. Um, so here's my point now. If we want... So from track... Which track is the first vibraphone track? It starts with track 5. So if we think of this as hit points, or these are actually the hit points, they're going to be down here. So here's my point that we can have black keys and white keys are going on two different lines. Which means that we might be able to have like bigger diameter marbles since we're doing a zigzag pattern of the hit keys. So we start with... Um, white key so let's splurge 40 millimeter marbles yes <laughs> splurging time splurging time this is what i mean that we can do this pattern right let's not repeat the 40 what have i learned us we check d39 and the dimension is d39 or if you want to be less fancy just use the equal symbol but Both way works. Yeah, I kind of like the. I kind of like the D thirty nine better. Um, so what I mean here is that we can have. Barnstormer three two two and a couple of others are asking why are we dropping marbles on the drums? I thought the plan was to use beaters instead. Yes, the plan is to use both. Both. Yeah. Yep. It, it's going to be based on the beaters on from the loop machine, but um You had some nice ghosts. So the loop machine is going um, here's the loop machine and it's going four times faster, which means that the loop is four times shorter. So the loop machine is maybe 16 turns of the crank. So, uh, and repeat, which means that that's the longest pattern we can program on the loop machine. So if we want a fill at the end of the song, uh, with the longer in between, the marbles can come in and add that because the marbles are programmed on this, the higher programming wheel. Um, and and that programming wheel up here is going four times as slow. So the marbles not only add like the flair of being a marble machine, the people love to see marbles on the drums, um, they would also add um the possibility to do drum fills on a longer time frame um if everything this is a kind of thing that i can totally skip if i can also have on and off on an extra drumstick i can just put it on by the end of the song and get the drum fill like that um and I can do that variation over time with on and off muting levers instead of the marbles. If it turns out that... Um, it's too complicated. I actually threw a big, big ball bearing onto my real kick drum in France. And I felt it wasn't doing the loud sound enough. So we need to drop like really huge, <laughs> heavy balls on that kick drum to make the sound we need. Um, so, um, which is like what we're doing here is to find out kind of what is the diameter of balls we can actually drop. Um, but here, for example, if we go to the four bass tracks, um, where we maybe, where we maybe don't, do not want to have the zigzag pattern, then we're all of a sudden, um, maybe conf constrained to <coughs> smaller marbles. 
and who knows maybe maybe this is not enough force they're still larger than the 16 that we usually that we had in the first machine d45 d45 So how many vibraphone uh, tracks did we have? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wasn't it third? Yeah, then. Seven in the first group. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm just going to constrain them that you are coincident with you and you are also coincident with you, you with you, you with you, you with you. And here's a cool thing then. This little space right here becomes then a drum channel. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Imagine to have like four centimeter big marbles. That would be so visually pleasing. Yes. And they would like, you could see them on the tour. You would be able to actually see them. Yeah. And yeah. I would maybe like to mark this. I'm just going to do this one like 50 to mark like this is a special, special little snowflake. <laughs> um let's constrain this distance and make everything black. 150. Oh, it turned black nicely. Did you oh, see that? Oof, oof. That's what we live for. Yes. 150. Let's make a small little thing here. I'm going to just run out and fetch some more water. Nice. Good Do you idea. need anything? No. Very soon we should actually check on the HTPE uh, results because people are, have been amazing in there. I see it already now. So this kind of plotting out, this kind of theoretical plotting, I never did for any one of my machines. And this reality is going to um, decide how many instruments we can have and stuff like that. So... I think I want to fill this in. Any new viewers, this is the model we're working on. But I've been moving over from this sketchy, like not serious CAD to doing, starting with a serious skeleton. Um, so we're having um, a side sketch. I'm going to show both of them. So this is the sketch from the side, which is the um, all the um, pivot shafts and all the gears and all the wheels. And then uh, I'm having in this top dimension, I have the marble hit points and the programming channels. And I'm also going to do later a sketch in the last dimension, like from the front, which will be like the drum placement, um, everything placed on this axis. And then the idea is that we can later CAD things on top of these points. And when we change things in here, all the other files will magically kind of uh, um, follow these positions in this from this one document um, hopefully so I should just make a pattern out of this I should have made that years ago So actually, let's not do this. Let's just get these out in the rest of the machine. 
Rectangular pattern. Oh no, I'm not in the sketch. You know what? If I'm gonna make a pattern, I can. Uh, So I've been on a crusade about rectangular pattern in in Fusion. I don't really like it. So this should be because it breaks often. But I'm going to do it now anyway. 51 minus 4, because we already have 4. And the distance is 26. Boom. No. Uh, 26 times 2. Did you see that? No. <laughs> 50... Uh, <laughs> look at this parenthesis around this times two uh, <laughs> divided uh, into uh. why is this not working minus divide oh, stupid I'm stupid trying to be smart and then being stupid that's 47. A story of our lives. There we go. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't end well. <laughs> Some, uh, for, uh, 47 times 2. Also, you're not allowed to do like division in this. Oh, that's not a whole number. Ah, okay. So I'm. Um, so is that why? 46 times 2? Yeah, it's happier. Okay. Of course. Huh. It can't do a half of the pattern. No. My bad fusion. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. It was on our end. Which means 24, I should have put. Or am I? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just a pattern. I can't get it exact, of course. So this would be the marble drop points. What do you think? <laughs> We're getting there, right? It's soon. It's done. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a save. Woo! So, and with this, we, yeah. 51 minus 4 uh, split in 2 isn't going to be an integer oh that was a yeah. fancy word from yesterday yeah 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 barnstormer 322 fancy 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 integer you know what i'm I think i'm going to add two more lines which will be the the out outer edges so now if wait what happened now Uh, that didn't work. I need to add even more. And sorry for this. Oh, so it's dragging the pattern. Okay, never mind. I'm going to add them manually. So let's kind of draw the programming wheel like from the top here like how we would see the P, the HTPE part without the gear. And I would like it to be centered over So let's do one meter and then let's center it 500 like this and let's do let's do this measurement plus 50 1300 and 1350 and that be true one three five zero and then this distance is one three five zero divided by two here we go let's 
Less than one. Oh, it's almost one and a half meter harness. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. But the amazing thing, like when what we were talking about in, in, in the previous stream, is like if we did the machine this wide, the vibraphone could play like a call and response. Ow, I just run over my own foot. Like things like that. Like things like that, the vibraphone could play like over a wide range and also change key. Happy end. Beauty. Happy end. And how will the marbles get on top to the marble dropping points? I guess we're going to have a couple of hundred tiny airplanes this time <laughs> around, right? <laughs> That's the new design. Is that your joke or did you steal it from chat? No, it's my joke. Hannes 3000 has a humor upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Life is getting better and better. Yeah, 100 tiny airplanes, radio controlled by the audience of the world tour. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody chimes in. Um, so, let's look at some harsh reality here. 1350. Hmm. Hmm. Is that too wide, Hannes? Is it wide enough? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's almost exactly 1348 here. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's a, it's a huge... Should we, show, should we show them on the... Like between us? Oh, yes, we should. 1350. So if, it would be like... Uh, 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 oh. It would be like this. Well, it's, it's not that bad, right? If we show them like this, straight towards the camera. I mean, Over here is the point. base. It's not that wide. It's huge. It's only the programming wheel, you know. No, it's not the... Oh, my oh, yeah. Now everyone can watch our cable management happening in real time here. Headphones. Is your headphones still in? Yeah. All right, good. Okay. Yeah, maybe we went a little trigger happy with this width earlier, but now we can anyway ch choose and we can see the results. So, I mean, these are, are not the outer dimension. You have to add like the flywheel and stuff. The machine is going to be two meters wide. Uh, I think it is a little bit much. But fun. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're all about here. So, mm. mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is this is probably a little bit overkill. Hello there says, why make it small when you can make it amazing? <laughs> 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 so the variables we can alter is number of channels and um and with between channels it's gonna be fun also to start thinking about how much this will weigh when it's this wide also the yes. weight of it all yes like and also like not all stages in the world have like these monstrous arena entrances and <laughs> some so, some stages are i mean it's going to be very limiting, like it's going to be a lot of buildings who just can't accept this monster. Um, yeah. Well, that's a later issue. It's a later issue. So let's try to see, let's try to feed this information into our pro and con discussion about replaceable vibraphone plates. So this is something we talked about this morning. Can you please fix? Yeah, there yes, we go. Yes, I can fix it. I can fix it. 
Um, the replaceable plates makes the machine less wide. Um, because we don't need the keys that we're not going to use on. But that means that we need to tune the resonators. Like like to put to just make a classical vibraphone, uh, then we would not need to tune the resonators. We could just have them stock tuned, which would be moi. Mm. It would be so nice. Um, we can make key changes, and the sign is more complicated when we need to replace. Like a normal vibraphone, all the plates sits along um, one string, so there's like holes through the plates, and there's just one big string. Yeah, I can show here. Uh, there's holes in the middle of the plates, and all the plates sits on one loop string, which means that you can't really replace them. So if we make like the full vibraphone thing, um, we wouldn't have to uh, replace them. So what can we do? Where can we cut with? We can remove the idea of playing the same note fast. There's so many melodies though that 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 hmm. Or maybe like one of the row here. Now, I was thinking maybe the top row is non-replaceable and the bottom row is replaceable. Let's have a look at the HDPE thing. You want to pull that up, Hannes? Should I pull it up? You have it right there, right? Yeah, but I don't have a... Um, I don't have a good way. Well, let's see if I can do it then. You continue work. I will do this in the meantime. Yes, perfect. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Um... I mean, the reason the resonator tubes were so problematic on the first machine was because I didn't plan for them. I just left that. And also for someone who wasn't here yesterday, like I was laughing so hard about the fact that I began this machine by building a frame without any instrument. And I was thinking, we solve the instruments later. So we had this frame and during the rest of the whole process, this frame was always in the way for the instruments. So I had to kind of puzzle the instruments in along this frame. I mean, it was because the reason I did it that way, it was because it was the same way I built uh, the plywood machine. I started with the frame and I was like, I'm going to start adding things onto the frame. And I took that process into CAD. And so that's why it's nice on, on, on this new machine that we are going to put the instruments first. Um, and then mold the frame around the instruments. So I think like spending a lot of time here in the beginning, like deciding how many vibraphone notes, where the bass guitar is going to be, how many notes have to access the kick drum and the snare drum and stuff like that. That's very, very good, um, good, good time spent. So trade-offs then. I think we would shoot ourselves in the foot if we make the machine like extremely wide. Um, Are we ready to watch this list? Yeah, so this let, document? Let me just tell people who maybe joined late that this is the CNC machine with the rotary um, edition from Alex CNC, fantastic YouTube channel, Alex from Munich. Uh, he's been helping me designing this uh, rotary edition, which is from Avid CNC. So thank you, Avid, who's been supporting me from the beginning with uh, fantastic equipment. And um, they have sent me this rotary kit and we have uh, modified the Avid CNC's rotary kit 
to make it possible to lower and higher the rotary axis with these precision plates here. And we've also built like a gear reduction, uh, bought a gear reduction thing here, super expensive little thing that, uh, that is high precision. So on this thing, we can machine helical plywood gears, large helical plywood gears, never been done before, I think, and um, programming wheel. And my suggestion is to use like HDPE, like water tube. We got, and we asked the chat earlier to find some links to that. And now we have a whole document with research being made by the people watching the stream. So yes. look at this. HTTP suppliers, thank you as you're welcome. This is fantastic. So um, let's just go and look at something. Uh, let's go and look at... Um, Netherlands. Yeah, take the Vink Kunstoffen. No, they're good they're good water engineers, the Dutch. Um so here's HTPE. High chemical bestand height. Can you translate the page? I do speak a little Dutch. But not enough to translate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Is there any images? On serious engineering pages, there's never images. <laughs> They're cold info. There we go. That's what I want. These are the kind of water pipes. Because they have thick wall thickness. It's just a, uh, it's a stock, and then we're going to cut it down to completely round. Okay, let's check another link. Um, something with HTTPE. Yeah, so we have acrylic tube as well. Uh, they are too brittle. Uh, so I think the HTTP is a good machining material. Um, mm, chart on last page in the length five meter. Okay, we can make the machine five meter. Um, PE only. This is Norwegian. Try the Norwegian then. Helgeland Plast. This one. Wow. So this is what I mean if you see the thickness of these pipes. They just want to become a programming wheel. Here, here's a great... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's a great uh, chart. Let me see if I can read it. So thousand meet thousand diameter has a wall thickness of what? Um, it has to be the fifty nine point three, right? Um, e minimum thickness. Yeah, that's the minimum thickness. O D thousand. Because since the wall is so thick, um, <laughs> imagine how heavy that wheel will be. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> We're going to need that freighter in the picture there, too. <laughs> you could bench press this pipe. Whoa. Perhaps. <laughs> So that was super, super nice, everyone. I'm going to take a, a thorough look uh, later. Yeah, you made it super nice and easy for us to read. Yeah. Makes very, us so, very so, so happy. Very, very appreciated. Um, wonderful. Thank you. I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea. I want to use like 80 centimeters for this lower one and 100 for this higher one. Um, together with the CNC machine, we're gonna, we will be able to achieve like amazing precision. So the whole idea is you create a center first. So you create the thing first. So when you put it on the CNC machine, I actually want to show this machine here. <laughs> always when I start with yeah. my hands, you go to oh, me big. Always. Um, Why do we even change angles? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's so fun to push the buttons. Um, so you create a center first, then you put it on the center on this machine, and then you cut the outside perimeter on the true center. 
which means that even if the pipe is a little bit irregular in, in its shape, it's not going to be irregular after it's been cut down, which is pretty cool. And how is the programming going to work on the machine this time? Because there's not going to be plates, right? There's going to be those pins. Those pins in drilled holes. And since the holes are round, it's much easier to machine as well. We had rectangular holes in, oh, yeah. in the other. So this is one way. Lucas Vendel thinks that I should use paper strips. Maybe he's right. Yeah, that's that's. I've seen it in the chat as well. We're not settled on that yet. Which to use? No. Okay, should we... Hmm. Okay, it's 180 kilos per meter. What? Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. No. The, the 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 one meter pipe. Both Linus Öberg and Lukas Vandel has researched it here. In the chart, it says one hundred kilos per meter. Oh, can you put that into the chart? It would be fantastic. Maybe it's already one hundred fifty kilos per meter. One hundred eighty kilos per meter. So I can't bench press that right now. I'm sorry, Martin. Yeah, you have to train harder. Um, okay, so let's find something with a smaller wall thickness. <laughs> Oh, that took me by surprise. It's the, <laughs> it's it's like made to withhold the pressure of the sewage system of a whole city. <laughs> uh, so it's a little over-engineered, perhaps. Okay, Hannes, I'm 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 having I'm having a classic issue here. Oh yes, let me help you. So yeah, let me let please help me. <laughs> I want to play all the music notes in the world. Yeah. Why shouldn't you? Because the machine becomes very big. Okay. So... Uh, cut the vibraphone in half and place uh, the other half in front of the, uh, the other. Yeah. <laughs> Same amount of plates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, cut it in the middle and move it forward in front of the other. You mean like like a church organ with four keyboards? Yeah. I saw someone talking about the church organs earlier in the chat here. Probably that's what they meant. Stop drumming on the table, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I mean, we went from a machine with 11 notes. Yeah. And now we are like on 37. 50, yeah. <laughs> so maybe there is like a sweet spot in between. Maybe there is a sweet spot in between. But it's also like, it sparks my imagination where, where I think I can do things like... Like key changes. Mm -hmm. But key changes, it's maybe a stupid design requirement. Is it? You, mm -hmm. How free do you want to be with the music? Yeah, I want to be as completely free but i also want to have a machine that is like possible to to put together and manufacture yeah so a designer requirement is being free with the music mm, no that's probably a very no i don't know that but this is a big trade-off already here like how many vibraphone notes we should put in Jesse Parker, maybe a continue, maybe a discontinuous keyboard, more range with some sharp notes. Yeah, I like the idea with the discontinued and then use the holes in the keyboard um, for drums and stuff. Um, hmm.
So for example, if, if we just skipped all the black keys, here, if we skipped all the black keys, just, just a quick calculations, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 less channels. So if we go back to our, our um, handy dandy top view chart and we go to our um, pattern here, not this one, but this one. And we do 51 minus 17. Like that's, that's another, that's another thing, right? We're down to a meter, mm. 858. Ah, oh, this is difficult. This is difficult. Okay, I should leave it a little bit. I should marinate it. It's, it doesn't it doesn't help um whacking um the head into this. I actually want to go into something else. I think, yes. Jörg Valosek, all white keys fixed, black ones modular, question mark. Yeah, that, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Um, that, that, that could be a, a, a really good thing because that could give us a lot of versatility. Did, did we have, we had, we even mentioned that before, I think. Add four changeable extra, no. <clears throat> um, I have to push this button. White keys fixed. Black, never mind spelling. <laughs> keys modular. Black. I, my my um, microphone shock mount is in the way of my keyboard, I, and I can't uh, write without looking. You know what I want to do? No. I want to uh, do something else. I want to try using our skeleton file, and I want to create the first shafts, the first axles, the first real parts. But this happened. Go. This happened yesterday again. I don't know why it's prompting me to make a version here. Does someone know that? Why it's like forcing me all of a sudden? Fusion is like, if you want to save me, you have to make a version description. I've never seen this before. I've never seen this window before. I had it yesterday for the first time ever. I thought if I was like in a sketch mode or, or something, or am I in a sketch? Like if I tried to say from here, no. It clearly feels like it's bugging here. Hmm. It doesn't allow me to save this. Okay. <laughs> 
So if I, it looks like it's thinking here. There's some kind of like thing thinking here. Oh yeah. You see that? Yep. What are you it's, thinking? It's about? the extra width of the machine. It takes longer <laughs> to save it. Duh. I'm, I'm going to give it a little time <laughs> test. It's jumping there. Yeah. It's super weird. And we got a little a nice message here from Tobias Rafstedt Lilja. Uh, will the new machine be roughly the same size as MMX? Riktigt härligt att se dig igen, Martin. Hälsningar från Jämtland. Ja, oh, vad trevligt med Jämtland. Ja. Oh. A lot of Swedes sending regards. Wonderful. I, I think. Uh, Yes, roughly the same size, but probably if if some direction, probably bigger. Yeah, wider. W yeah, wider. <laughs> I I'm going to try to wake fusion up somehow. Um, hammer jammer test. So that one saves nicely. Let's try to save this one. Let's maybe go out of this. Lucas Olsson says, sounds like a version control lock of some sort. And now, oh, I thought it was a crash. Version control lock. I, that, I think you're absolutely right about that. So it thinks, look, now it's happy again. Okay. I closed some other files down and now it allows me to save. Good. Now we can move on. Let's have some water and move on. Yes. Let's create the first part for the Marble Machine 3 crankshaft. XX, XX, crankshaft. And the way I want to do this is that I want to start with importing the skeleton. Mm. Um, oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> leave like, us hanging like that. <laughs> I was like, it's upside down. And I was just reading the text from the wrong way. <laughs> oh no. I was so sad. So... Um, my point, I'm going to demonstrate like now how I'm planning to build up this whole thing. So new component, um, XX, XX crankshaft, um, and I'm going to create a sketch on the middle plane. Now I'm going to project a point P for project. And I'm gonna choose. I'm not taking the point. I'm. I. I rather. I'm going to take. Yeah, I'm gonna take this little thing. This little twenty millimeter thing, and I'm gonna project that and leave a projection link, like this. And. Um, I actually want to. To sh to sh to show you the function, I'm I'm just gonna extrude it like this now. This is not how I'm going to do it later. I'm just gonna make sure that my idea works. So here we have our first crankshaft, right? Save this, and now if I go into my skeleton here, and I decide, oh, this gear needs to be bigger. The crank needs to be higher. So I don't want 800, I want 700. I have to fix those arrows later. Good. 700, I save this thing. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just getting into it again. <laughs> I never had this before. So strange. Like, if someone can find out what, what this is, ver version lock sounds like a... Let's see, chat. They probably know about it. 
maybe I have to upgrade Fusion or something. Feels because I'm the only one in these folders. So so this is um Sometimes Fusion gets happy just from opening and closing some other of the designs. Hmm. No. So weird. Blair, Spurt Burglar, Crankshaft needs to be closed before we can do it, probably. Uh, no, that's not how it works. That's not no, how it normally works. Maybe it wants us to like do some change or something. No. Because the, when, when you reference designs from other designs, um, you can have all of them open and you just get a little flag that the design has been changed. I have a feeling that someone is writing a tutorial right now that on how be, to fix this. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Let's just try to close this one. We closed some stuff earlier. This one saves nicely. This is annoying. But we're not giving up over a small thing like this. Kilarith, Dusgleaf, uh, you probably have some form of version control. GIT or SVN installed in these folders and it's locking files that are set to be modified, question mark. So now it allowed me to save. No, no, I'm in the wrong file, I'm stupid. So version control, as of now, there's no other file. There was no other file referencing this file when we had the save issue. Let's see. I'm just going to Google over L here. Lucas said maybe because of the XXXX crankshaft, since it's dependent, it might need to be saved first. It, it, it happened before. I, I referenced it in here. Make sure you've saved after the extrude operation in the crankshaft. Jairo Cabello. Mm. I'm going to do a quick go, go in. Fusion 360 prompting uh, prompting user. What, what What is it saying? User ver, prompting version description. Version description on save issue. How to disable add version description prompt on save. Is mm -hmm. it is there a way to simply control S and save the file without the prompt to add a description? I don't think there is a way to do so, unfortunately. Uh. So what happened now? Maybe I just let it think? Maybe, because now this looks different, see? I needed to load the skeleton design, version 35 to 36. Ah, uh, maybe it was just loading time. Yeah. And maybe it was my... See? I'm very, very seriously... <laughs> this could be the rectangular sketch patterns that we've been using. I'm, I'm Probably. A... Those are the culprits. I'm actually serious here. <laughs> I hate rectangular sketch patterns in Fusion. Bad things happen when you... Now I can demonstrate what I mean. Now we go over to this... And now you will see this crankshaft. So when I hit this um, up, upgrade this design, one component is out of date. I can show it to you better. One component is out of date. Click here to update. When I update, this crankshaft shaft will move 10 centimeters up. So I'm updating there. Did you see it happening? Wow, magic. Magic. Yeah, imagine when you have the whole machine. Yeah. Okay, so now we know. I just didn't have patience enough yeah. to wait for 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 that thing um, to 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 load. And seriously, it's the rectangular pattern we've been using. I think. Okay, 
We solved it. We solved it. Thanks everyone for Nothing your patience. Nothing to worry about. But this is not how I want to CAD uh, the crankshaft. I want to revolve. I want to have the crankshaft CAD from the top. So this means that we have to do some better CADing in here. So I'm going to remove this extrusion and I'm going to go into this sketch and in this projected thing, I'm going to remove so we know. So this purple thing is going to always follow uh, the skeleton design. I'm just going to draw one uh, horizontal line here, there. And on that line, I'm going to make plane at angle. Oof. Mm. With no angle, zero Meow. degrees. <laughs> so here we have a plane. Let's create a sketch on that plane. Uh, so this is a mid plane for the... Why can't we see it? And why don't we see that sketch? There we go. Somewhere I have a little line. Here's my little line. The line is drawn. So let's project that line. And now we can CAD this shaft the way we want to CAD it with, with a revolve. So I'm just going to um, do now. Now I'm going to do clean CADing. So now it's no messing around with um, with blue lines and stuff. This is going to be the CAD that we're actually going to work with for a long time, hopefully. So you are coincident with you. And the cool thing when we're, I'm cutting now half the shaft is that we can put like things into it. So uh, let's do a little nice bevel there. And let's just for fun make like a stop, stop ring pocket there. And then we go all the way over here. And we do the same here. So to show you where this is going, um, we're now revolving this shaft uh, around the middle. And this is a better way to CAD a oh, thing like okay. this. Because then we can add all the features of this whole uh, shaft in one sketch. Okay, nice. Nice, huh? Nice. On this flat sketch, I, from this master sketch, we can create several different components. So let me demonstrate this to you. We're gonna delete this uh, revolve that I used to. So let's create three physical bodies here now. So new component first, uh, crankshaft. And the crankshaft, I'm gonna revolve here. Uh, profile select. So when you need to select two profiles like this, mm -hmm. you have failed. Um, you should clean that up and make it um, make the line um, work line uh, or a construction line. So it's a whole line now. And if I exit, it's see through and I only will need to choose one plane. So let me redo that and go into crankshaft. You can see now when I change, I only have to, the whole thing turns blue. Woo! Woo! So we're going to revolve that around the middle. All is good like this. So this is our crankshaft. But now I'm going to create a new component and we're going to call this gear one. So this is a completely different body. But I'm going to revolve this from the same um, from the same master sketch. So I can revolve this little rectangle around the center. And look at that. Oh, wow. It, it does feel like engineering, doesn't it? Yes. And even better when we create the next... Comp Let's make this yellow um, just for fun. This is going to be our plywood color for some time. And if I'm making a new component, I'm going to call this flywheel pulley. Uh, good, do, 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 do. And the cool thing when, when you make round shapes like this, you can see that I already cadded the flanges there. Wow, that is a cool thing. 
It looks cool, right? Like a beer opener or something. Yeah. So then from one, you get like all that geometry. Um, so, and then let's make the last thing here that I was actually working on when we started. This is going to be uh, the crank thing. And uh, do, 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 do. I have to go in here to continue with that a little bit. Let's do this and let's do crank handle, also like a revolve, just like this for now. So we put out a link earlier, maybe you can repaste the link of the HTPE research project that everyone helped us with earlier. And I think what we really look for is thousand millimeter diameter with smaller wall thickness HTPE, because we realized that the one we wanted to use was going to weigh 200 kilos. So if you can filter the information that you found um, and filter out links and exact description to what suppliers have the thousand millimeter diameter with kind of 25 millimeter wall thickness. And if you can also put into the document what that way per meter it would be amazing because I think the wall thickness of six centimeters will be super heavy. And with two, it should be maybe like correct amount of heaviness. Um, so, yep, the link is pasted. You know what to do, chat. Fantastic. So often, often, um, like finding the websites is often like, that's like step one. And then inside the websites, finding the good stuff inside the websites is like, um, it's difficult, especially with the websites that were on languages that we don't speak. Um, so I'm going to uh, revolve now. I'm going to start a new component again. And this is going to be just crank. What is it called then? Disk. Um, wait, this is, oh, I can revolve it like that. Oh, let's make a disk now. Boom. And then I'm just going to make, this is still a little bit blocky, uh, crank handle. Then I'm going to revolve this rectangle around its own mm, line like that. So if we look at this beauty together here now, um, the nice thing with this is now if, if we show, if I show the dimension of the master sketch, look at this, mm. this looks like engineering, doesn't it? Oh yeah. I want to move the pulley outwards. Oh, that one. Wah. Wah. Uh oh, constraints. Edit feature. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. I moved it outside the, um, I moved it outside the lines. I can't, I can't do that. I have to, I have to, it's this. I know what happened here. Let's just make the just make this longer. Three hundred. I moved it outside the the shaft. I wasn't allowed to do that. Now, two hundred seventy. Boom. So I have at my fingertips the, the sideways position of this pulley, and I can even make it parametric. And I want to move the gear. Sure. We want to move it there. I want to move the crank. And yeah, you 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 get the the gist of it. Um. So it's a really nice way to to build up like a sub assembly uh, of the crankshaft, which we know are going to be assembled together. And then you can kind of reference the dimensions of each other. So I'm actually going to create um, a full assembly here. So XX, XX, machine three, full assembly. 
Oh, that's tickling, no? That's a little tickling, actually. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> 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 um, into which I will insert the crankshaft. Boom. Because I... Part of the stream objectives for today, if we take a look at those a little quickly, it's I want to plot the gear train. And that is like something that I'm going to work on right now. So most of this stream, we've been fretting around like how many notes to use on the vibraphone and how wide we can build the machine. And those subjects get so heavy after some time because it's so big decisions. So I'm going to relax a little bit by making some gears in, in the meantime and just let all these uh, decision making marinate in the background for some time. Um, because I actually have another ask of chat. Ooh. How do I CAD helical gears? Like, I've never CADed a helical gear and I need to learn that. So, um, like, maybe I should just watch a tutorial. I, I couldn't really find. I'm gonna... Like, can you see... Uh, can you pull up, like, a CADing helical gear tutorial on YouTube? Let's um, see if I find something. That would be fantastic. Because this yellow block here is going to turn into a helical gear. So... And right now I'm not driving this by parameters. Um, maybe I will in the future, but right now we're not, we're not doing that. Um, so I'm going to repeat what I just did for the crankshaft, uh, for the, um, let's see, which shaft should we do now? I want to kind of make this gear connection. So this is the gear, this is the compound shaft. This is the same shaft that we had on the first machine, which this, so basically what I'm going to do now is this shaft here. Is it cut off? Strange. So, and basically the gear I want to make is this, like this gear here. So let's start yet another new design file. It's funny that we changed tonality after the break. Yeah, completely. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're back now. Uh, chat is saying that there should be a plug-in or extension to Fusion. To now do... that, that's for spur gears. Okay, okay. Um, I've never seen it for helical gears, but maybe, maybe there is. There is a plugin for spur gears. If there is one for helical gears, that would be amazing. Um, this file should be called compound shaft. I have some tutorials if we want to take a look at. I can't. I don't know the quality of it. <laughs> Can you swipe through it and see if it's like looks like it is uh, helical gear? Oh yeah, this looks great. Let's have a let's have a quick little let's have a quick little less listen. We have to credit the um, the channel as well. Yeah. Yep. 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 Let me prepare this. I'm curious where they get the measurements from, if this is just common knowledge, like angles and stuff. Because the teeth are angled uh, in like two directions. Maybe it's a normal spur gear. Actually, with just a curve. Chat is saying here, Autodesk app helical gear generator. Oof. Just check, there is a helical gear plugin. For fusion, yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. Okay, so what I'm actually we're gonna pause this a little bit with the helical stuff. I'm gonna finish this um, shaft first, mm. 
And then, so, and then when we have the two, then we're going to learn how to make helical gears and put them together. It's going to look amazing. Mm. Hopefully. Um, it will. So I will import the skeleton like this. And I will create a master sketch. Uh, master sketch. Boom. And in the master sketch, I will now make a sketch on the mid plane. And I will now project. Oh, we don't have a 20 millimeter. I'm actually going to go and add that in the skeleton file. So I want, I want every center to have a 20 millimeter circle because then I know. Oh, here, here's a tip for you. When you want two circles to be concentric, don't do what I just did. Don't put it on the middle point and think that these circles are concentric. Sometimes fusion is just not choosing the same middle point, especially when you have several middle points on the same. So you actually don't know what point you constrain your circle to. So foolproof way of uh, doing concentricity, put the circle outside and use the concentric constraint. You'll find it up here in your menu. If you choose, <laughs> and if you choose to add it, I pin it to the toolbar. And so I put this, it's going to be concentric with this. This is a better way to put the circles together, especially when you have like 10 circles sharing the same midpoint. Because when you just drag it to the midpoint, you don't know who of these one to nine circles you're actually, actually attaching it to. And then you like remove one circle and your whole model falls apart. Uh, it happened to me a million times. <laughs> Been there, done that. Got the Got t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Got the Wilson and the Mountain t-shirt for it. Um, so I'm just adding this little 20. I'm going to add 20 everywhere. So, oh, look at me. Not following my own. Not teaching what I preach. What is it called? Not teaching. Preaching? Like, I mean, like doing what I preach. Practicing what I preach. That's what I say. <laughs> Practice what you preach, right? So concentricity, boom. I'm just going to add this little 20 circle on all of them. The reason I'm doing that is that I know I will never delete the 20 circle. Maybe the other ones. I Now I did wrong again. Uh, I got a quick update here from Om Gestav. Wow, you guys are still live. The disc golf went fine, quotation marks. Oh, we want to hear the score. <laughs> so we got an update from our disc golfer out there. What what did you have on the round? Did you play like all 18 holes? Practice what you preach, someone says here. Yes. Bat Boy 2021. There's an interesting example again. This little circle right here is orange. And it's already defined in the diameter. And look, it wasn't in the middle, see? Oh. It, this is exactly why I'm preaching. That circle looked to be dead center. It was not attached. So imagine like you build this machine, you have it manufactured, and the gears are not meshing just because you didn't these were not concentric so everyone hail the concentric yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what is it called constraint so now we have uh, 20 millimeters uh, everywhere and yeah i'm just gonna have them like that Let's see if we can save this now or if it's going to take ages again. Oh, so all of a sudden, yeah. All of a sudden it just works. Now I'm updating up here, updating the thing. And we have our little circle. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So which gear am I working on this one? 
So I'm projecting here the little 20 circle and that's purple, which means it will always follow. <clears throat> so well, let's see, let's see if we wait it out then. We learn about this now. It's just about waiting out this little. Oh, look at it. Fantastic. Patience. Some patience. Patience is like humili uh, humility, humbleness. Yeah. Like being, I always say that I'm not really so good at being humble. I'm really good at everything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's a favorite of yours, yeah, that I joke. That I made that, I invented that joke. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I invented that joke. <laughs> I think it's like, I th it smells like dad, dad humor. But it's like one level above mm. that humor. No? If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to... Um, I don't take a stand in this, no. no. So again, like, um, again, when Darth Marius showed me this the first time, I didn't believe him. When you sketch, use constraints to make the lines to do what you want them to do. Don't draw them like you want. So I want a straight line now. I'm not going to draw a straight line. I'm just drawing the line, then I'm telling with constraints. So actually what I want you to do is that I want you to be, I actually want you to be, um, one second, I have to project this little line and then we're back. Um, I actually don't want you to be straight. I want you to be perpendicular to this line. Okay, good. And I actually want you to start on this little point. Okay, so I make a coincident constraint. Okay, good, you're there. Nice. Now the line is where we want it to be, not because we perhaps drew it right, but we're not sure, because we constrained it to be there. So it's very, very satisfying, of course. <laughs> and I'm making these stupid bevels. It's just because it looks professional. So same here, I don't care about how I how I draw this. You see it's crooked and <laughs> Oh, sorry, I answered by mistake. Sound is off now. And now it's 90 degrees and this is 135. Boom. And um same here. This one is perpendicular to this one, and it is coincident here. So for example, now if we change the diameter of this line in the other sketch, this shaft will follow. Oof. Things like that. Oh, honestly, wow. <laughs> Boom. Um, this line is blue. Yeah, why? So if you want to find out like why a line isn't constrained, you can try to pull it and you're like, oh, I can pull it this way. Okay, so let's constrain it like sideways to this line. Let's say 300. And you're like, hmm, it's maybe still, this line is still there. Okay, probably it's because this needs to be like that. Now everything is black, everything is good. Oh. It's very nice. nice. What a pro you are. I've been I've been cutting a lot during the break on the on the secret uh, Marble Team Maker Kit project. And it was actually like cutting. I did so many long days of cutting that wanted me it inspired me that project that all that cutting to go back into the Marble Machine 3. Because I think I think I know more now. And I think I know my way around fusion so I can get out of most situations. Mm. Um but we can still learn. For example, today we're going to learn how to CAD helical gears. Yeah. And we also have an update from the disc golf here. Okay. <laughs> from Um Gestav. My friend went one under par, me nine over. But Slot Skogen has 22 baskets now on the yellow course. They've done awesome work on the course the last two years. Big shout out to Stålstugan. Yeah. Boo and the Slot Skogen disc, disc golf club. Which I represented in Swedish championships once. Mm. Uh, I was the little goat, and my opponents were the T-Rex. Um, 
But shout out to Slotskogan's Disco, of course, super popular place. And like it saved me when I was recording the first album uh, with Wintergott. And we were there every day in the winter, me and Jared. Shout out to Jared. So we should do a meetup there one day. Um, okay, so now I'm, I want to position this gear that we're going to work on. Uh, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it the same way here, um, and now we should be a little smart with parameters, so we should not have to guess. Um, I'm gonna put this thirty eight. So we have our, our audience is the best, you know, Mike Perry. I just tried the gear plugin; it will save you a lot of trouble, and it is super easy to use. So. Ooh. We, he already tried it for us. Like, we, we're planning in the future, like, someone like that who's already tried it. We're planning, like, if we can, like, make a Zoom call, maybe, with, like, that person. And, like, that person could, like, teach me, like, over the Zoom call to just how install it. Like, just maybe with voice or stuff. We're planning to, like, be able to do stuff like that in the live streams. Um... So, can you, um, you, what was the name of the person that already tried it? Mike Perry. Mike Perry, um, can you like write a com, can you make like a super, if you have time, just write down like, where do I find it? What's the name of the plug? Uh, do I, do I run it from, is it a script? And how do I, I install I it? I have it here. Seems pretty easy to find. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I'll, we'll just Google it. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to discuss something. I wanted to discuss global parameters because I think we could create some magic right here in the beginning of, of this project. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Um, Maybe I didn't set it up correctly, but we can better, better, better later than better late than never. Uh, comp uh, gear two, I call this gear two. So let's. Oh wait, I want to create for actually first. I want to create the shaft itself. New component. Compound. I don't know what's correct, axle or shaft. I actually don't know the the definition between them two. Mm -hmm. So if someone would like, is this an axle or is it a shaft? Chat will tell us. Can it be like shaft is when it transmits power and axle is when it's not transmitting any power, like when it's idle. Because like on a, on a motor, on a boat motor, it's like a shaft, right? Or maybe it's just like, maybe it's just the same. So here, let's revolve this master sketch. Where are you? There you are. So it's a bigger gear make that yellow like this and then let's go into the full assembly and um, import the this compound shaft like this okay now we have a lot of different explanations here Jack Lefebvre axle is non-rotating shaft is rotating mm. Jer says shaft is for transmitting power B says the shaft is used for rotary motion while the axle is used for linear or angular motion. Cool. Okay, so there there is there is there is a di difference. So where else? If it spins, it's a shaft. If something spins around it, it's axle. Okay. Sounds sounds great. Um, 
can I use? No, of course, no. So as you can see now, these two yellow gears, let's update this file. Um, these two yellow gears are not meshing right now. They are not uh, on the same uh, plane even, and they are not um, meeting each other like the pitch diameter. And I think actually I even made the wrong... Oh, I shouldn't do that. 18 plus 18 is 36, not 38. So I want to update that. I want to have this 36 millimeters. And I'm going to do the same for this one. Let's just show these dimensions. 36. Boom. We have to be patient here on patience, this screen. Patience, patience, <laughs> patience, my love. Have some warm water. Here, I can just show you. There you have what you're going to download later. Mm. Simple as that. It should just be to download there, I guess. This is so cool. Proper herringbone gears. Oh, that's like with double. Yeah. So why would you use a herringbone? Is that they are self-centering? <sighs> hmm. So now we need to find out if... So now we want to know, should we use hel normal, like one row helical gears, or should we actually do herringbone? I prefer one, because herringbone, I think the, the plywood will be too brittle. I'm sorry for this weight, this is like a new thing in Fusion. Yep. So if I'm zooming in, you can see the little... Yeah. It's stalling. Yeah, it's... And a lot of people are screaming about where is Wilson. Wilson is safe, you guys. <laughs> He's back in the studio. He has not disappeared anywhere. We, we, we don't know what he's up to right now. He could be in a, like making a lot of trouble. We don't know. But hopefully he's a good boy and behaves. Honestly, I'm just trying to grow up, basically, and leaving <laughs> all my pets behind to see if I can manage on my own. Wilson, will. <laughs> he, he always <laughs> returns. He didn't in the movie, though. He was lost at sea forever. Well, we write this movie, no? <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, discard and I'll cancel this. Okay, so just let's just see. So this one is happy. Let's update this and let's save this one. This one is happy now. This is the only thing like with, with splitting the design up on multiple design files. Like you start a chain of uh, where everything is like relying on every. And now this was okay. Okay. So now we can update this. Crankshaft version 8 have unsaved changes. Discard. We're already on version 10. Okay, so let me fiddle around with something here. Um, something that I haven't really done is um, global parameters and especially importing them after the fact. Um, so what I want to show you is I want to show you like a way to CAD so these gears will always line up, but we can still move them around. We're just changing one parameter. So let's say, I'm just thinking which design we would do that. One way is the front of the skeleton, of course. But this, that document is going to be... Sorry, I'm thinking out loud here. I think it's better to have it driven by a parameter. Let's just try. Um, I 
So pro maybe I'm doing this in the wrong order here, but but that's that's okay. So global change parameters. Um, so user parameters. Will they? Let's try. Uh, gear one distance. And we mean we mean. Um, from center, but I don't. I want to. I want the name to be a little bit short. So let's just say two hundred. Uh, let's say three hundred. Let's say two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna see. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Is this turning up here? No. Okay. So now we have to How do I model parameters? How do I after the fact where is global parameters in fusion? I have to educate myself. Um So let's let's head over uh, here so global parameters fusion 360 local and global parameters parametric design global parameters global parameters for all project autodesk forum Project parameter, user. Hello, please to feel where it's possible. Oh, it's a user request. Mm -hmm. Enter parameters. They can be shared across all designs. Top down design where master model contains a high level. Yes. Great, thanks for that. It makes per since these global parameters are related to a project, would you want to be able to define at the time you create a new project? And I love that people are joining from all around the world here. We have Jack Mann, good morning from Southern California. And also we have Alex DeFerris, good morning from Northern Minnesota. So now the Americans are waking up. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> As we're pushing on here on the later half of our work day. Yes. Oh, well, welcome, everyone. So a lot of people are asking for solved global parameters across multiple files in a design. Um, go to solution. Um, a lot of people are asking for this feature. Take a look at this blog article and video. Beyond, add a master parameter list to an assembly and linked. Many users create Autodesk using linked components. Yes, I do that. Wish to control the parameters of each component and the assembly from a master parameter list. This video will step through the process. Okay, so this is um, time. I'm going to see if I can, I can see if I can share this. Hang on. Hang on. And I say welcome to people from we are from Colorado, Ohio, Montana, Miami, Brazil. We have Germany, Manitoba, Czech Republic. That's Espana. amazing. Vamos, Martin. That's, um, that's amazing. Alberta, Canada. Here, now we're talking Canada, California. Wow. Woo! And England. People from all around the world joining in to watch this brilliant cadding from Martin Molina here. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> yeah, cadding, I, 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 I don't know. Um, okay, so, oh, we don't have us. Yeah, we are all on, over there. So um, I want to credit the... Um, wait, I have to reframe this a little bit. I'm sorry for this. Um, 
I just want to credit this John Hackney YouTube channel here that we are finding this tutorial from. Um, no. Oh, wow. Now people are just correcting <laughs> where they're sitting. It's so nice to see people from all around the world, though. Luxembourg, New Hampshire, Vermont, Prague, Russia, Switzerland, Sverige, Skövde, Portugal. Can you go on to another screen while I'll while I reframe this, Hannes? If I can. I can have a picture of the both of us here Fantastic. looking pretty as ever. <laughs> <laughs> you should let you should leave that for others to comment, you know. But okay. well, I just know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about humbleness earlier. Stockholm, Utah, Netherlands, Mexico. Finland. So we did prepare this, but anyway. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's have a look-see, shall we? So, cred to John Hackney here mm. on YouTube, who's made this tutorial. Add a master parameter list to an assembly and linked components. And let's see if we have sound as well. Central parameter file. Yeah, my of assemblies you may have no. components that are built inside the assembly. Yeah, I, th I think so. We have the sound. So, user parameters. Add one, you make it a favorite. A favorite? Was it? Is it that simple? All this. Parameter icon to my toolbar is being controlled by these user parameters, which are all been made favorites. That's a key point. When you add one, you make it a favorite. So if I change a parameter in this table, it will automatically change the assembly and all the components they affect. So favor it's just to start it, I guess. The parameters are available. Now your master list would be very extensive. So you want to be careful and not pick them all. Only the ones you need for your new component. In this case, I want my box width, my box length. Yeah, he's just fa okay. Okay, we can go go back to something else. Perfect. Let's try this tip from John Hackney. John Hackney, a savior. Per perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps a very, very good thing. Um... Sometimes the, sometimes the solution is just staring you right in the face, isn't it? Yeah. So what he says, if I I didn't spend a lot of time listening to the tutorial. <laughs> you skimmed it. But um, I think I added it in... Where did I add it? Not there. Modify, change. Look here. Oh, there you got a star. So I start this one. It turns up in the favor in the favorites. Um. So first of all, now now I need to tell this gear to use this parameter. So I go instead of this um, one seventy distance here. I write gear one distance user parameter. Ooh. Yes, please. And it's already Ooh. moving. <laughs> Hannes Magic. 3000 motivation. Magic. Upgrade. Absolute legendary magic. <laughs> now we go over to the compound shaft, everyone. And now maybe my, my, my happiness is going to be uh, gone. Fate. Ah. Ah. Well, we had, Why is it we had fun for a small moment. Ah. <laughs> uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. I didn't listen to the tutorial long enough. Or maybe I need to like save Update this. Update something. Maybe I have to save this document. Chat, help us out quickly. I was so close. <laughs> <sighs> Favorites. No. Ah. Uh, no. Don't they understand like this is what this is how we want to use it. 
I know you should make a list before you start with all your parameters and stuff, but I didn't do that. You can't do everything at once. Linked master. You skipped over it in the video, Mr. B Fox. Yeah, I'm just gonna check here. Linked master component. Okay, so he's bringing it in. Okay, wait, 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 wait. New thing. Now I know. I have to program it in a shared design. I have to program it here in the skeleton uh, because that component is going to be in there. So then we can access the favorites through here. So um, if I'm putting it here, uh, add gear one distance. I'm, I'm just setting a two so we know this is the new one we made. 200. Here. My favorite in this design. Okay. And then I head over to the crankshaft. I look at my... Maybe I should save it as well. Then, because in this file... You can see that the skeleton file is present. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we will find the parameter from the skeleton file. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully change parameters. Um, you got to use a parameter up there, right? Yeah, but this is the one we did before. Oh, okay, okay. So I actually want to, I actually want to delete this one. Yeah, I'm using it so it doesn't want to. I'm going to put 300 here now. That doesn't even work. Um, so, okay, we're figuring this out. Linked. Is that a setting in his model? Because I, I don't have linked here, linked master component. Mm -hmm. Why does he, why does John have that? in his list and I don't. Is it because it's not visible? No. Can't be. <laughs> Can't be. So what we're trying to do is to control several designs with a parameter from this list and we just need it to appear. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see what he says. Modify all by these user parameters. For example the well, let's talk about Master, go down it. I'm interested in the parameters. So down at the bottom of the derived table, you'll see parameters. Expand that, and you want to check the favorites. I was checked already, but yours probably will not be. So check that and say OK. So in comes that new file as a derived component, and you'll see if you hit the parameters button that you'll see a he's using derive I don't want to derive he is doing from a master file when looking at parameters parameters expand the model you want to favorite the parameters from mm -hmm. I have an idea if it's derived, let's make a parameter design. So I'm saving a completely new design. Parameters, parameters. So I make a file only for this function to work. In this file, I make a um, user parameter. I say gear, blah, blah. So we know it's a new one. I put 200. And I favorite it. Boom. So now we have an empty design file with only uh, parameters. And now I'm going to create a derive. So I create a derive file. Uh, please save before. Yes, save. Create a derive. Derive is wonderful. And here is the little, uh, the little thing that he showed to include the favorite, param favorite parameters. Okay, and we're going to send this derive 
file to an existing design. No, destination. Yeah, existing design. Uh, am I choosing in the... So this is the one we're going to send. And I think I'm choosing here. Yeah, I'm choosing here. So we're going to send this into the machine round three. We want it, for example, in the crankshaft. Select. Um, so now I have in my crankshaft thing, I have a parameters here. I've derived that the right thing. Now we go to our parameters. Gear blah blah. Okay, there it is. Wait for it. Is it still? Why is it not favorited? It's not favorited in this, maybe. Mm -hmm. But so now it's the big question: Can I use it? If I can use it, I think I've kind of solved solved it. Or John Hackney sold it if I would just listen better. <laughs> so I put here gear. Oh, the tension is rising. No, it doesn't read it. Oh, no. I only have that one. Mm. No gear, blah, blah. Do I have to add it? Oh, now it's up there. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. I May can see it now, yeah. Yeah. Now gear, blah, blah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you why this is wonderful. Because it's maybe not so wonderful. We need to have this parameter thing <laughs> derived. <laughs> you can't have a, a win. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not so wonderful. Um. Is there an earthquake? Or maybe I should just have made a... Uh, maybe I should just have... Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another thing. I'm gonna try another route. I'm gonna derive this into a new design. Derive. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna include the favorite parameters. Perfect. So it's gonna turn up here on the left. Um, where did it go? Don't save. Oh, that was the. I'm. St I'm sorry. I've been sleeping a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that was the. There's nothing in it. So parameters include favorites. But do I have to redo this? No, I sh no, no, this will update, I think, when I update the mm -hmm, list. Mm -hmm. So let's derive parameters. Because I don't want to have to derive for all of them. That sounds horrible. So here I have in my list here to the right, the derived parameters. And now we head over to this compound shaft thingy. Thingy, thingy, thingy. And... Now we just insert the derived parameters, not in the gear. Sorry for this. I have to mark this first. Now we insert this derived parameters design here. And this is this is uh, this is a big unlock if if, if I can it works. if it works. Okay. So change parameters. Yes. Suspense. Uh, nada. Okay, perhaps we're going to have to watch the entire tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you just needed to expand the parameters from that model. Sorry? I think you just needed to expand the parameters from that model. I don't know what this means, but... Because, because you, you have to favorite here too, I think. Just let me do what I did with the other one. I go back here. I derive straight into. So into destination and existing design. And I take the favorites. Now I derive straight into the compound shaft design. So this is the way we did for the first one. Select. 
one component is out of date. Where did it? I don't see it. Look, here it is. So here we can access it. And just to prove my point where, where I'm going with all this, if I now write gear blah blah here, boom, and oh. we save this, yes. boom. Yes. And we go to the master yes. uh, assembly and we update Out, this. Yeah, outdated, yeah. Will update the that. gears line update up? Updated. Will the gears line up? And they are lining yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's great because and now the point is when I want to move these gears, I only go into he like here, the parameters. So to move everything on the whole machine, I, I, I just, so now I want to move them 260. I save this. Oh my God. Oh, we have to wait. <laughs> Sorry for this. Um, we just have to wait. So I'm building a long chain of dependencies, which is a little bit brittle. Yeah. Um, so now we have to wait, even though there's no rectangular pattern. Okay, saved. And so now, interesting. Can I go to the master assembly right away? Look, it already knows. Okay, okay. I'm going to try to update from here. This is yeah. not sure this will work. Oh, oh, <laughs> boom. There we go. Nothing can stop you, my friend. Whoa, can I get a fist bump? This is... Uh, this is this is fun. Uh, this is actually fun. So John Hackney from YouTube, go and give him some love for that tutorial, um, and let me know if I skimmed it too briefly to actually be able to. Maybe he has a smarter way of doing it. Um, super fun. I'm gonna. I want to rename this parameter because I don't want it to uh, be called. Um, gear blah blah. I'm gonna what <laughs> gear one distance. So I'm gonna save this, and now I'm curious to see if um, this is such a big bug. I think what 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 is it waiting for here? So now I'm curious to see if the name change. Um, will prompt another like save or if it's but I, I don't think so I think it will just update just like the distance updated like perfectly save screen music <laughs> Ready? You're just tuning in to the Vintigatan radio show right here. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So now let's go and have a look at if it's still taking it. No? Yeah, look here. We have an interesting thing. Oh, it's not up. It's just not updated. Let's let's see if we update it. <coughs> Baboom. Wait, is it Oh, so maybe, maybe changing the name broke it. You're editing this design in another tab. You can save changes in one tab. If you save changes, you may lose your changes in the other tab. Oh, look. It works. Wow, my yeah. friend. Wow. You didn't give up. You didn't quit. You solved it. <laughs> Exactly like you're gonna solve this machine. Well, Woo! Mm, although I can't, it's still not happy even with me. I'm happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanna this one. So this one. 
that I created derived parameters. I should delete this one. Okay, so I, I think I made a little bit of a mess. No, 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 I should not delete that one. Good. Why does it say V4 here and V2 there? Yeah, so these are the, like, we're gonna do something like this. Um, and can you change the param parameter in that screen, Mr. Bfox1775 asks? Uh, no. 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 So this, this will be... Um, so let's try that. I can just change which parameter is, this one hasn't ah. updated yet, but this is because we haven't upgraded it. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. There we go. I can just look at it. Okay. Um, but I can't like go in and say, change the distance. Okay. You need to go into that derived one. Yeah, so mm -hmm. basically what we're going to we're going to spend a lot of time in here changing the values in here. Um we'll see, we'll see. Um so let's for example look at our um skeleton so now the diameters and we're going to do the same for the diameters using the same parameter derived file. Um so if we show dimensions for this one. So here we were using 150 and this is 820 so uh, can 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 you help me remember that 150 820 150 820 chat and i should actually change later okay never mind so then we go to our parameters and we add that to our list so we add uh, gear one diameter 150 yeah boom one, 820 and we add gear to dia 820 820 Woo! we're favoriting all that and now Let's update this. And look now, this this is going to be blowing your mind, Hannes Knutsson, if it's turning <laughs> up here. Because look at this now. In our master sketch, show dimension. Uh, we don't have a dimension for that. Dimension X. So here. Gear. No, okay. It doesn't see it yet. So we have to... Ah, we have to do this. Mm. Yes. Yeah, favor yes, everything. Yes, yes, And now, look here. Oh! Gear 2. Yes. But, that's not all. Divided by 2. Boom. Oh! There, yes. we there we go. There we go. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> Whoa! <-ho! laughs> and let's head over here. Um, we have to update to get the parameters. Refresh. <sighs> so I never knew how to do this. I'm not sure I'm doing it the correct way. But it's a pretty cool workaround. But Fusion should just give you like, yeah. just give the user like some parameters that appear automatically in all the sign files. You may not doing it the right way, but you're doing it a way. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So here, um, which one? No, this is not the one. Don't I even have? I want I I want it in the middle of this one. So here we put gear one dia divided by two because the radius. And now 
if we move to the master assembly, these gears should magically meet in the middle, okay? So the, the pitch diameter of these gears should now be correct. Let's upgrade this. Oh, what do you say about that? Oh my, my God, <laughs> my God. It's lovely, 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 lovely. Okay, that was some relaxing um, learning from Fusion Re 3. Relaxing panicking. Yes. Uh, so we're not going to shy away from the in-depth stuff on these streams. Oh, no. It's going to be a lot of these kind of things. Um, oh, we have to wait. We're still waiting for the loading screen, my friends. I don't understand why Fusion is doing this. People are asking if you're saving to the cloud or on hard drive. Mm, hard drive. Hard drive. And if we would save to the cloud, it would be much faster because we have thousand. We have one gigabit bit internet. Oh yes! Finally, we've upgraded. No limitations whatsoever anymore. Woo! Woo! I don't. Okay. So this is a little bit of a bad sign that things are already like, things are already like, but it was actually, to be honest, this was before we started with all the parameters and stuff. Let me just show new people like what we've been working on. Look, look at that masterpiece <laughs> in the works. <laughs> So that's what we've been working on, and now we're doing the starting to do the uh, real things. And once I can save this, we're gonna go into another tutorial. We're gonna learn how to make helical gears. Oh, I've waited my whole life for helical <laughs> gears. <laughs> Woo! Did you knew knew they existed before today? Uh, yes, I learned yesterday. <laughs> so. Yeah. Maybe I need to like restart save. fusion. Yeah, restart fusion is a good idea actually. Save everything. And I do not like this message like you're you're editing this design in another tab because it's not true. Mm. Why are you doing this to us fusion? Yeah. Soon we're gonna have the um, the debate on which software to use. MS Paint. Here we go. <laughs> 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 this was super fun figuring out the. Yes. But. Hmm. 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 Okay. Let's go over to some other screen maybe, and I will start to try to install the helical gear add-on. Nice, the best, the best angle of them all with the two most beautiful men <laughs> sitting here cadding, right? You're supposed to leave that to the Shh. audience. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do anything. <laughs> helical gear generator, Mac OS. 
loading, yes. download, free. How Thank are you, you. How are you doing, chat? Now is a great time to just update me on how you're doing. I have to log in. Jer says, from my exploration, there, there's no real alternative to Fusion 360 once you are used to it. That's a little bit how it feels for me too. So I'm just going to install this software. Do everyone. it, do it. We we'll sit right here. Scott Moffat, I missed you guys. Well, we missed all of you as well. It's great to be back. Finally doing some some work again. Woo! Definitely. And like, like what is happening right now that I can get things done and we can learn together and like that you could like check immediately if this software was something like a user has already so what i'm doing right now is i'm installing a software to make helical gears and it's already been tested by um a nice person in chat was it mike perry it was mike perry yeah so um no b says doing better thanks to this stream and that warms our hearts hearing that that we can keep you guys a little bit company perhaps very much as you can see right now we are so entertaining to watch right <laughs> <laughs> you know that bruce springsteen says it's called show business you show people you don't tell yeah look at this screen right now this is showing this is brilliancy <laughs> I'm logged in to my Autodesk account. Can I download it now? Yes, it's downloading. Helical gear package file. Took me some time to log in. Oh, wow. Now this, here you go. Inge Andersland. Have Martin recognized you as his Sam, Hannes? <laughs> so many times. Sam Weiss. Here we go. I can't carry the ring. But I can't carry you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the I have to allow OS X because it's from an unidentified developer. So I have to go in the security and privacy and tell OS X that don't be scared of this helical. Um, it will be a helical good of time. <laughs> 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 yes mac os x cannot verify that this app is free from malware you need to force start it perhaps how do i do that uh when you open the file yeah Wait, I have it here. Okay. Helical okay. gear open anyway. Are you sure? Open. Here we go. So continue, continue, agree. Helical gear program. I agree to whatever you ask me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you are in the strong position now. We need your help, helical gear. Okay, so uh, can chat enlighten me? I have installed it. Where where do I find it? Do I find it as a... Using this... Oh, it's an add-in. So maybe it's already up. Turned up. David E says, Something you'll have to keep in mind with helical gears. They push each other along their axis. You mean to the along the oh yeah that's why they use herringbone yeah that could be that's a very good point what was the name of that person uh david e yeah david good very very good point call gear test i'm just gonna see if the add-in is here add-in 
Jobs and Add-ins. Spur Gear. Add-ins. Helical Gear. I think I'm just going to close some stuff, Hannes, and then I think... You know what I just saw here in our sheet about the HDPE pipes? No. Someone has made a pipe mass calculator in it. (laughs) (laughs) I I love this audience. Yes. (laughs) And also different kinds of marbles to watch at at your leisure. Fantastic. Okay, I have the program installed, I think. So we're ready to... CAD is ready. We're ready to do a, a, a test. So Ooh. it's in the under the add in here, and it's not in scripts. It's in added. And here something has turned up. Helical gear. I'm gonna run. Should I do? Should I have done create? Uh, how complicated helical gears are for noise. They are quieter. Okay. Yep. Yes. And. 21 times 9 says herringbone gears can only be 3D printed though, can't they? Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, Mike Perry is here now under the create section. Is that where you're in? Yeah. I'm yeah. A, thank you, Mike. That's why I want Mike on a Zoom call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> create a new... Okay, so Mike, what do I do? Script or add in... A, create new script or add in... Mike will come to the rescue here, you know. Python. Great. <clears throat> no. Stop. Ross Korsky, full path. Stop. Run. The run, nothing is happening. Or maybe now I can use it as an now I can use it as a script. Or should it maybe turn in here? Maybe I have to create a script. Sorry, sorry for this. I, I never hey, we, we learned something here. Create a new script. Maybe this is it. Programming language, what what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> what do I know about that? Testing helical. So I make a script from it. Create. And now I do run. Hello, script. (laughs) Okay, sorry, guys. This is... um, Mike Perry says, go to where you would extrude a sketch. Um... Maybe I should have read on the website how to do this. Script and add-ins. Run. Hello, script. No. (laughs) Scripts and add-ins. Add-ins. Helical gear. Stop. It should be running, right? And then extrude. I double-click. Okay, sorry for this. Um, it's a lot of learning today. Um, does it mean like uh, just make a new sketch? A s- a solid, create. The, uh, extrude, I guess. I do not understand. Extrude. <laughs> <laughs> um, there. Helical gear. You see? Mike Perry, you're a genius. So it's there all of a sudden. Yeah. Helical or dry fix gears offer a refinement over spur gears. There we go. Woo! The leading edges of the teeth are not parallel to the axis of rotation, but are set at an angle. Since the gear is curved, this angling makes a tooth shape a segment of a helix. Helical gears can be matched in parallel or crossed orientations, which is the... Um, from Wikipedia, nice of fusion, nice of this author to just helical gear, everyone. Helical Let's gear. give them helical gears. <laughs> 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 um, gear standard. 
normal system, module three millimeter, five millimeter. Oh, look oh at this. Wow, 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 what happened there? Here we go. Here we go, everybody. Let's make another one. So I want the gear thickness to be 36. And I want uh, pitch diameter. Um, no, I can't. I have to. I have to look at the pitch diameter down here. This would be very nice. Preview. Oh. So the pitch diameter in the normal. This is something an improvement for the wonderful person that made this app. If you could kind of give give us the pitch diameter already here, or maybe it's here. I'm just missing it. Um, helix angle handedness. Oh, that's like that goes the other way. Uh -huh. Oh, here's the pitch there. diameter. There you go. Where is the pitch diameter? Pitch diameter 92.376. So if you remember, we wanted 280. No, what did we say? 100. We want one with 150. So let's start trying to make that. Um, so right now it's too small. And then teeth. Let's stay with 16 teeth, so I can just add to the module. If I do 6, you can see the pitch diameter is Ooh. growing. 7 module. I want to get close to 150. 8. Um, that's 147, that's pretty close. 9. That's too that's too big. So eight. And then I want the Don't you have the middle diameter? Backlash. Let's do I think zero for now. Handedness. Normal system. Let's just look at what this is. Uh did you see a difference? No. Sunderland. Oh yeah, it's the the angle of the of the gears. Okay, normal system. And this looks super steep. It looks actually kind of Can this be machined? Yes, it can. Because on a rotary CNC, this can be machined. This is why it's so cool. Mm. We can machine this on a rotary CNC. Um, but it, yeah, let's. Should we try this? Eight millimeter module, sixteen teeth. What is backlash? And that's how much extra space. So like, I just saved the screenshot. Um, I think it will like shrink. If I make one millimeter, the teeth will shrink a little bit. Okay, yeah, I did, saw it. Did I shrink? Yep, yep. That's just... I didn't even see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how much extra space we're like leaving for, for the meshing. Mm -hmm. And maybe someone has an idea of what would actually be correct. And I would love to have a diameter center hole in here as well. Wouldn't we all? <laughs> Let's create this one, and let's screw all these. Oh. oh, look, it's so beautiful. It looks like Wilson's twisted cousin, right? It's great. And also, <laughs> like, um, Mike Perry and, and, and Chat, thanks for, like, aiding in this, in this endeavor. Here we should have a nice center hole. I'm just going to cut out 20 millimeters. But the thing that they're saying about the pushing to the side might might make this a stupid idea. Like that. Boom, boom, boom. We have a helical plywood gear. Never been done. Maybe for good reasons. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who cares? Um, so let's head over here. Just for fun, insert this. 
Okay, chat has already named this gear Helson now. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Just for fun. Boom. Okay. Cool. Mega cool. So I took a screenshot of the pitch diameter. I have to, um, so we're going to do that in the parameters. In our parameter list, we're going to create a new one. Um, it's actually this one, gear one dia, but I want to call it pitch. Pitch dia. And if I can just find my screenshot. Um, here's my screenshot. No, I can't. I can't show show you the screenshot, but I can read from it. <laughs> it's forbidden. Um, gear one pitch dia is currently hundred forty seven point eight o two millimeters. Beautiful. Um, so now I want to head, hmm, oh, maybe, hmm, okay. Um, so in this gear, in the big one, what, so right now I don't even know what, oh, I can count on the big first machine. What gear ratio we want here? Um, so I hope we. Mm, so this one had how many teeth did it have? Maybe I just had a little bit. Oh, it's not named. I think it was sixteen, and I think the other one was. So if you remember on this machine, I have this gears offset like this. This is actually my low key try of making a kind of a helical gear function yeah, yeah. to have more toes. So if you if you think of it, this is like a low bit rate, low resolution helical gear mm. by offsetting half. Um, so let's see if we can. Then get that tooth count. 112 tooth gear. And what was the other one then? 16, right? Am I, do I have to count this? Uh, a lot of people in chat are talking about that you... I saw it up here from Isan F. Why not stack two of these next to each other to make a herringbone gear? Yeah. And Elliot also mentioned it here. I'm seeing a lot of people mentioning herringbone gears. That would be a great idea. Two helical gears mirrored and put together to remove sideways forces. This audience is skating where the puck is going. <laughs> oh, yes, they are. <laughs> Our Gretzkis. Our Gretzkis. Um, I'm just waiting for Fusion to wake up. This model is a little bit heavy. We can give... Oh, swimming. Uh-oh. We got the bath ball. Uh-oh. We have uh -oh. our first uh -oh. on-stream crash. Our everyone. first crash. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my computer... No. My computer didn't die. Only Fusion died. Yeah. Woohoo, everyone. <laughs> first crash. 
I think it's a great idea to to make the herringbone. Only, only will the helical thing actually apply? I think like the the reason for a helical gear is that to have more tooth interacting, and if we're making the gear equally narrow but herringbone, I think some of that advantage is lost. It. So I think like the herringbone idea will want even broader gears if I'm not um, messing up. I'm just going to open all these files again. Woohoo. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Can I change back now? Yes. Woo. So what people are suggesting, and I think they are, um, it's a really good idea. Um, let's break this link. Just for fun. Helical, helical gear. Spent it. I spelt it like it's gonna heal us. So if we now take the mirror and we are mirroring this component over this plane, we're gonna have. Something super cool. Tractor tire. Oh yeah. Yes. Ooh. But my point with this is that if we do that on half the width, I think the whole idea with the helical gear. Like that's a question for all you helical gear experts out there <laughs> in chat. Like, how broad do they need to be to relay? Because now we are like in overkill territory. This is seven cent. Oh, it's only seven centimeters. <laughs> it will look so cool. <laughs> Don't get your fingers into these gears, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and should it point inwards or outwards? Oh, mm -hmm. wait. It points, it doesn't matter. Or. So the way we would machine these would be to machine them separately because you can't really cut this and then just put them together. This is so cool, Hannes. It looks awesome. really badass. It looks badass. So if I understand it correctly, in all car engines and everything, they use helical gears. So now let's make the big one uh, for the compound shaft. And let's make it inside this design. Um, so, and it's almost 820, so we're going to try, we have to use the same gear module, so create, uh, it's not here now. Oh, I have to run the script first. Now I start to remember how the scripts work. I have to go to utilities and I have to like tell Fusion like, uh, to run this add-in, helical gear, run it, and now I think it has appeared in the menu. Yes, you see, I'm I find my way around sometimes. Um, so now I'm just checking what module we used. Um, eight millimeter. So we have to use the same module for the gear to mesh correctly, and. Then we can check the gear parameters for the pitch diameter to get close to 820. So let's start with 64 teeth. Let's add a preview. And then we can see that we're getting close. It's going to look even cooler. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the thickness is 36. 
so this is my point. When you, when you see the gear being really thin, I don't think that the angle teeth are helping at all. Maybe I'm using too big module. Maybe we can have much smaller. So module is basically tooth size. So let me just demonstrate what happens if I put a very small module, like three millimeters. Oh, wow. And the whole gear will shrink and the whole teeth will, uh, will shrink. So here you can see like with smaller teeth, so maybe I actually choose, you get much more interaction. So, and, and here you could like go crazy. You could go 128 tooth teeth. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Fusion. You can do it. I shouldn't have enabled the preview, perhaps. They're always wondering why is a helical gear a design requirement? Um, they go, they go. Generating a gear with a high number of teeth has poor performance. Previewing will be limited to 150 teeth by, but clicking OK will generate the gear. Ah, uh, nice. The person who made this is a star. Um, helical gears are superior. <laughs> Helical gears are more silent and have a more um, exact power transmission because you have more meshing. So at every instance, you can have more teeth meshing instead of just having one and then the next one. So instead of having d -d 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 -d, you have a smoother power transmission, probably resulting in less vibrations, more silence. So in car engines and stuff, they use helical gears for this reason. Otherwise, you would hear the gears all the time. Uh, so let me go back on this. And it might be overkill for this machine, but with our rotary CNC machine, I don't have it up on uh, Fusion right now, we can actually cut these helical gears, which is, I think, the first thing when, when Avid CNC talked to me about the rotary kit, I was like, can we make helical gears with that? was my <laughs> first idea. And I was like, oh, I don't think ever, that has ever been done in plywood. And like, I want to do it. Do you think this will have an advantage on the machine if you compare it to with the gears on the MMX? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Okay. So, so there is a big difference. Alex CNC yeah. thought that it would be silent. Yeah. Um, Since you're moving to an acoustically good sounding machine. Yeah. You want the reduced sound. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I also think it will be flashy. Mm? Um, so let's get the pitch diameter up. So we can see now we have 591 millimeters. We want to be close to 820. Uh, so let's just increase. So we haven't even done our math now on the gear. Um, Who needs math anyway? Let's do this. Oh wait, 112. It was 112, wasn't it? 112? Yeah. On the... Um, oh, 112 tooth. So now we are on pitch diameter of 739. So let's keep on going. This is not going to be the last versions. I, I, I'm, I'm, you have to kind of find the size of the gear you want to reach and then you can also alter the module and the gear teeth, uh, depending on what ratio you want. Uh, Ooh, 829. Let's, let's take this one. Okay. Boom. Okay. And then create a sketch on here. have some kind of center, don't we? Project this one should give us a center. 20. I hope that's the center. Just cut this out. That would be super nice if the generator added a hole in the middle. Mm. 
Um, but hey, let's join this with a joint right now. So Fusion is not so happy now <laughs> <laughs> with the helical gear. Let's join it to here. <laughs> Okay, and let's mirror this. Let's mirror this component over this plane. Correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. This is crazy. <laughs> crazy cool, yes. It is kind of bad ass. Let's cut some spokes in this to have fun, shall we? Having fun sometimes lead to good stuff. Yes. Here. Let's just make a little spoky spoke. So people see how cool this is. Dee 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 dee. I'm completely forgetting that we're live streaming. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... <laughs> we would act like this even if the cameras weren't rolling. <clears throat> Almost. Dee, dee, dee. Boom. Um, let's, what did I do now? Let's offset this, minus 40, boom. <laughs> mm. How many spokes do we want? I'm always a sucker for five. Five is nice. You like five? Four is cool. Six, no, oh. wagon wheels. Yeah. <laughs> We're not creating some kind of wagon wheel here. Have you saved in a while, my friend? Soon. This actually looks kind of bad. Whoa, come on now. 140. It is nice. I should add the fillets in the sketch. Just give me. So let's just do it like mm. no. This is not the real gear, so I'm not gonna add the fillets. But with the fillets it would look cool. I mean like this. Yeah. Oh. Let's see if we're almost meshing. We have to then add these new pitch diameters to our global parameters. And then we should be meshing. So let's first head over to our global parameters. Let's add the gear to pitch diameter parameter that we got from the from this new gear. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, what is happening here? You need to go into user parameters, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And why? Can you right click it? No. So I mean, I'm in the right. I'm not in the sign file here. I okay, okay, okay. I was in Ooh, the. Okay, yes. I was in this. A deep breath and some water. I was in the wrong one. This one. <sighs> Modify parameters, and they're there immediately. Gear two. Um. So the pitch, okay, I think I messed something up because this name haven't changed. Or maybe the, the crash. 
Take it away. The gear 2 pitch diameter is... Oh no, I forgot to screenshot it. Ah. Ah, never mind. It's not the real one. It was 829 something. Oh, nice. Look at this. So we're not meshing perfectly because... Oh, we're pretty close, actually. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. So, like... Seriously, what I'm really like... This is actually a question for Alex CNC. Ale I'm gonna text him. Alex CNC. Um, how... <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no. <laughs> He's at work. He's doing batteries. He's saving the world. Um, I don't even really know what to ask him. So the question is, of course, like, how small teeth we can make. I think that's pretty interesting here, to make the teeth a little bit smaller and just make them more, which means that we have more... The whole... What we're trying to do here, is, instead of this one, slamming at only this one, we're trying to add as many points as possible like this. And I think... Um, the smaller we make the teeth, the more points we have, and the more brittle the plywood becomes. And right now, I think we're f way, way above super strong. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that was so much fun. So thanks to Mike Perry for finding like the yes. software. And these are not the final versions. And now I know how to create them. I have to do some math. Um, we have to actually find out what gear ratio we want here. Um, so I want to copy the ratio of the first machine. So let's head over to... I'm going to head over to my Excel sheet. Mm. <laughs> Your favorite part of the show. Um, home. And we're going to make a new tab for gear ratios. Gear ratios. Uh, why don't I just do that in my global parameters? No. Gear one. Gear two. Gear three. Gear. Gear four. Uh, this is. Uh, Uh, okay. So we want, from the crank to the programming wheel, we want 1 to 64, which is exactly the same as the normal one. So, yeah, I have to open the mod, I have to open the module and just count. Let's try to open the master assembly. Mm, yes. So this had hundred twelve. Let's just add that. Gear two hundred twelve teeth original model hundred twelve. And then this little thing. I had the name in the I had a tooth count in the name and it's gone it's gone oh we have like the all the old documentation somewhere we 
One, two, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen makes a lot of sense. I knew it would be like an even gear three, sixteen. Um, and this little friend over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That rings a bell. Fourteen. And then the big one. I do not want to have to count this. Let's hope that it's in the name. Oh, it's in the name. Thank you. 128. 128. So we can do other. Um, so what's 14 divided on 112? Oh, I have to put an equal sign. To make it calculate this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait. Ah, 112 divided <laughs> on 14. I can't. Yes. Thank you. Eight. <laughs> so this pair has. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so this pair have um, what I call gear ratio 1 to 8. One, two, eight. And uh, I guess this is the same, right? And then eight times eight is 64. That's why we get. So just just to, for demonstration, 128 over 16 should be eight. Wonderful. So, and I think like the way you calculate a compound gear is eight times eight, 64. So basically we can have any gear teeth ratio if, and we can divide it, uh, we can just multiply it with eight. So, um, and this comes down then to combining the module. So, so you have a lot of like, um, so now in like, what you have to do now is to kind of come look at, I have to open our, open the skeleton. Now you have to kind of see what kind of distance you want between the gears. Mm. And as long as this shaft it has not been placed yet, you can kind of have whatever whatever you want to. But this is just, we don't know yet where the crankshaft is going to go. So it's actually premature to go in depth into the tooth count at, at this point. It's better to like cut on other stuff. So I'm going to leave the example gears that we just made and actually I think we actually like um, should actually move on to new grounds. <gasps> oh. But this was great. Helical gears, everyone. I think it's going to be part of the new machine. So, um, where is... Oh, I have to open that. I'm going to open the blocking design as well. Hmm. <laughs> there it is. I almost <laughs> forgot about it. Yeah. So I took a little break from like instrument positions and stuff because it's it's a real daunting thing. And but we've been a little, little bit everywhere. It's 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 actually great. Um so it's safe to say that I think this machine is too big. Okay, yeah. We, we went there. But of, but of course, um, yeah. We have increased the center-center distance a lot. So it all depends on how big marbles we want to do. And the zigzag pattern, let's see, is that in the skeleton design? So this thing that we talked about earlier in the stream today. This is going to determine everything. So yeah. this is the zigzag pattern for the for the marble drop points. And he 
here we just enter these territories where everything everything just affects everything else. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to know what piece of the puzzle to try to lay next. And these, thing, these things have been the most difficult ones with the previous machines, right? Yeah, because I never did this. Yeah. I, I just hoped for the best. Yeah. Uh, in, on the physical machine. So... So this is this is um this is this is where where the future is um, <laughs> really laid where the puck is going to be right <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly then we have something completely like different i'm going to i'm going to note that in the design requirements like i really want individual individual muting levers for each programming track I really would like that plus groups so for example if I play on the bass um, I would love to be able to just mute three of the strings and just have the have one of the string being played so not only ha so have a better granularity and this is going to be from the new playing position this is going to be kind of tricky so when i was standing here on the other side of the machine i could always reach the lever so how do we fix that on this 3000 and that's a big nut to crack that's something i think we're gonna have to sleep on and be ready to attack i guess we don't have much time left today yeah we can marinate on on, on this and um, and what is the next logical step to do now oh thank you thank you for that segue i was just i was just feeling actually lost so you know what the next step to do is doing what we didn't do on the first machine so on the first machine we started with a frame yeah so we just we made this first and then we hoped that everything would fit in yeah kind of and when putting the machines uh, instruments in it was horror show from <laughs> beginning to end uh, like trust me i wouldn't have given up on this you know how you know how expensive this machine was to try to build yeah you you'd like like yeah uh, I wouldn't have given up on it if it wasn't impossible. So the next steps, which leads us into the next stream, I guess, is that I think I should take this inspiration, but I should create the real designs for the drums and just start to place out together with these shafts. Uh, sorry, I have so many files. So here, to start with the real drum designs and start to put the machines out machines the instruments out yeah um on with the real designs and just try to add piece by piece and keep the model parametric also off stream i'm going to do some cleaning up on on this parameter id because i think i've saved two files so mm -hmm. i'm just gonna get a full grip on this and this list is going to dictate completely everything we're doing <coughs> oh. <clears throat> so yeah, two days progress. I actually think it's been great progress. Oh yes, come a long way. I think so. We're trying stuff out, taking small decisions, playing around with ideas. This is fun. And most of all, like the help from the chat. Yes. I go on and on about it. It's been wonderful. We should have like, I think we should soon like set in like a call in uh, voice channel. So when people are like, want to help me with helical gear software and stuff you can like tell me live in in the broadcast like how i can do it that would be so much fun yeah. and thanks for the images from discord from from asha and everyone over at discord and hannes 3000 being being whole, steering the ship like a like a like pro captain speaking of that i just roll the nice little video we have here reminding yeah. everyone of the nice merch that's available Merch that's signaling, never giving up, and just starting on this new journey with us. 
Yeah, you actually get power up points depending on which design you're using. This is a collaboration with designers from the community and um, we tried like to theme it uh, around like no, not giving up as Hannes 3000 hour said. So here you can see the angle grinder t-shirt give you plus seven in stamina. Oh, I mean, that's brilliant. <laughs> and blood sweat gears plus 11 in determination. <laughs> and we also have a newsletter, which we won't bog your inbox too much with, but this is the from, we skipped Patreon and YouTube memberships. This is the official information channel from Vindicata. So thanks everyone for joining today. Thanks to Hannes 3000. See you tomorrow with some accurately pitched diameter helical gears. There we go. Thank you everyone. Take care. Bye.